The legends from Balka back on the field defending their top spot. They've had just about everything go well for them. Two wins and just that one loss and back to two wins. Mohammad Nabi must be delighted. But their opponents are the hard-hitting Kabuls one on. And they bat not only well, but they bowl rather well too. So it's going to be a mouth-watering opportunity. They've got big challenges and they'll be under pressure to step up their game. Afghanistan Premier League 2018 Sharjah Cricket Association Stadium and this is going to be a big one because uh, yes, Balkans as uh, Charu was mentioning, they have really done well, top of the tree there, Kabul, uh, well, uh, next place, so it's going to be a fight uh, amongst the top two and both the teams have really gelled well, uh, going through the routines, the motions uh, just in the afternoon before the game, Kabul, uh, captain uh, Rashid Khan, such a key member of this side, a very handy customer with the ball, with the bat. And Wayne Parnell would like to deliver as well. So they have got some uh, big names there in the ranks. But uh, at times the bowling has been just a touch patchy for them. The batting has been absolutely brilliant. And mentioning about how they progress so far. They won uh, the opening game against uh, Pakhtia Panthers by three wickets. They lost against Bal, the same team they are playing this afternoon. Then uh, two uh, consecutive wins for them. And of course then... They lost to Dungarhar by 15 runs. So, uh, they like to come back, gain some confidence before the big knockouts. Uh, Brian was out there for a chat. I'm delighted to say that we've got Luke Ronke of uh, the Kabul Zwanan uh, with us. Luke, thanks very much for being with us. Now, uh, it's a funny one, isn't it? Um, in the last game against Nangaha, you were back down to earth with a bump despite making an absolutely flying start in your chase. Has there been any reflection on the way you went about things there? Um, there, I think there always is after a game, like win or lose. Um, but also in the in T20 cricket and franchise cricket, I guess you play so regularly now. It's sort of almost like you need to look at the the more positive side of your game and, and then go from there. So, um, like I said, today new game, new opposition, um, different pitch again. So you sort of look at all that sort of stuff and take that into consideration to the way you might play. Now, Bulk, yesterday we saw, in contrast to the way you went about things against uh, Nangaha, they were subdued at the top, kept wickets in hand and went hard at the end. Where, is there value in either approach or, or value in both approaches? I think there's value in both approaches. It's the same thing. It depends on the pitch. Uh, it depends on your opposition. It also depends on your own game style and your game plan going into a, into that fixture. So, I mean, also, from what I heard yesterday, the new ball was a bit harder to, to face yesterday. So as the ball, the, the ball got older, it was a bit easier where... For our game, the new ball is definitely when you had to make the most of your opportunities. So, um, sort of see how that sort of plays out today. Now, you lost to Bulk last time, lost by eight wickets. Are there any lessons to be learned from that game or, or is it just a completely different scenario now? Um, same thing, different scenario. That it's later on in the tournament, pitches are changing. Uh, still an important game. You want to win, you want to sort of get that momentum going to make that top four and, and sort of get into those semis. So, um, we just had to go and be positive, uh, play, play freely um, and enjoy ourselves. And, of course, you're going to be batting alongside Hazratullah again, and uh, that must be a real joy to uh, open the innings with him because it takes the pressure off you a little bit as well, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it does massively. I mean, sort of at the other end, when he got that 100, it was amazing to sort of be out there and watching it um, firsthand. So he's a, a serious striker of a cricket ball, so hopefully he can do a bit more of the same tonight. And runs for you in that last game, so uh, that must have been a pleasure because you'd got starts in other games and hadn't quite gone on with it, had you? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's... a. I guess it's a frustrating thing when you sort of you're feeling good at the crease and you get those starts and you get out. You sort of you get a bit frustrated. It was nice to sort of make a contribution. It wasn't we didn't win unfortunately, but it's sort of nice for going forward. I guess it sort of gives you that confidence. Luke, thanks very much for joining us and uh, best of luck for today. Cheers, thank you very much. Made a very important point. The wickets are changing because of the wear and tear, natural wear and tear as the games uh, progress. And mentioning about uh, bulk legends, well, they have some big names: Chris Gale, not to forget. Uh, Ryan Tendis card is really batted well for them. It's going to be interesting whether they make some changes today or not. Also, Ray Bar in the ranks, of course, led by the very experienced Mohammad Nabi, uh, the captain, a very decent all-rounder. And uh, mentioning about how they have progressed so far, they won the opening game against Kabul. That was a comprehensive win by them for them. Uh, then against Kandahar as well. But that was a very close game. They lost against Pakhtia Panthers, and then two consecutive wins, uh, beating. Pakhtia Panthers, the last one by 89 runs. So they progress really well, just losing one game so far. And of course, uh, Brian was again down, a busy man, had a chat.
delighted to say that we've been joined by Ravi Bopar of the Bulk Legends. And uh, Ravi, reflecting on yesterday's game against Paktir, that was probably the perfect performance, wasn't it? Yeah, I agree. Um, getting almost 200 on the board and winning by nine, 90 runs, um, absolutely ideal for the boys. Uh, it gives them great confidence, both with the bat and the ball. Now just explain how you went about things with the bat, because it was a very measured start, keeping wickets in hand and then going hard at the end. It, it, is that the right way to go about things on these surfaces now, do you think? I think what we, well, the, one of the previous games, the one we lost, we were guilty of losing too many wickets in the first six or seven overs. And um, you don't want to do that here because it's always hard for a new batsman to come in and start. So one of the things we said was let's, let's le be a little bit measured in terms of losing wickets and... Uh, we know we can take down bowlers towards the end, with, especially with the overseas batters that we've got, and plus Nabi coming in as well. Now you're up against Kabul today with Hazra Tuller at the top of the order and Luke Ronke, so I guess you've got to prepare for them going hard at the top, haven't you? Yeah, I'm sure they'll come hard. I think that's just the natural way uh, of those two batters. So, um, But there's always a chance of getting a wicket as well. Uh, when you're going to come that hard, you've got to, they're going to provide you with opportunities which you can take and then uh, get stuck into the middle order. Ravi, thanks very much for joining us and best of luck today. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Such a key member, Ravi Bara. He's really done well. And when these two teams met last, well, Kabul Zawan uh, getting 176 in 20 overs in Bulk Legends were up to it. Winning that game, uh, they won by eight wickets. A very good win for them. And Descarte getting 78. Uh, Osman Ghani, the opening batsman, getting 40. And Rashid uh, just able to pick up one wicket. Bowled well, was uh, economical. But a good win for Bulk Legends, and they would be high on confidence as far as this game is concerned. Let's see what the surface is, and surface always plays a very critical part. Alistair Campbell was down there with a the pitch report. Well, we're in for another double, double header here in uh, Sharjah, and the overhead conditions haven't changed. Not a cloud in the sky, still very hot. But what about the surface here today? So it's a new surface. We're uh, across from the one we played on yesterday. And I just want to show you here the foot marks. There's no foot marks. There's no scuff marks. I go up to where the spinners would normally follow through or the bowlers. There's no foot marks here at all. So when I come to a length and I, and I look down and I and I look at the difference between yesterday and today's pitch, I see that there's not a lot of cracks. I see that it's uh, got that charger sheen back. And although, like we know, uh, when the pitches are a bit tired and uh, it's going to stay lower, it might turn a bit more, might grip a bit more, I just think that the groundsman's done a terrific job in getting this up to speed. I see uh, a lot of runs in this wicket. So, yeah, like I said, I think that uh, it might be a little more difficult for the batsman. But as we saw with the first game yesterday, if a Batsman gets in and finds the boundary. It's 195, 200 is, uh, is still a total. We saw the batsman uh, struggle as the game went on yesterday. I think this is a good surface, and I think throughout the day this is going to play pretty well. Expect some bigger scores. Alistair reckons it's going to be a good surface for batting, uh, much better. Not too many uh, cracks there. And mentioning about the points uh, table so far, Bulk Legends, top of the tree, they've got a decent uh, net runner as well. Kabul would uh, like to catch them up and uh, win this one and then they'll be at eight points as well. But this is going to be a very important game because they're on six. So is uh, Bhaktia Panthers. Uh, Leopards uh, lost yesterday. They are on four. And Qatar Knights won a very important game for themselves. So they fetched two points last evening. Remember, the top four teams will be qualifying and vying for the semi-finals. Let's see what happened at the toss. Alistair Campbell was out there with the two captains. Well, we are here in the middle for a very important toss uh, and it's between uh, two sides, two form sides in the competition thus far, the Bulk Legends and the Kabul's one and Bulk Legends of course at the top of the table now, the two captains are here alongside me, two of Afghanistan's finest and uh, that is Mohammed Nabi, Rashid Khan and the match referee, Mr David Jukes. You've got the coin, Rashid? Heads. Heads is the call. What is it, David? Oh, it is a head. There we go. There we go. I'm going to get it right today. You're going to bat first. Um, obviously, a bit worried about the surface and getting slower and lower. Is that why you want to bat? I think it's uh, this uh, surface is uh, very good for the batting. That's why we tried uh, to bat first here. Yeah. Okay, you're top of the table now, so you must be pleased with uh, the brand of cricket you're playing and uh, how people are contributing so far. Yeah, everything is uh, perfect going on, and uh, we'll try our best in this uh, in this league to to the top of the this league. Yeah. Okay, I mean, obviously, I think on eight points, you're pretty uh, guaranteed of a place in those finals, but you still got to keep playing well. You don't want to rest on your laurels. You don't want to take anything for granted. No, we have uh, uh, two ch four changes in the team today. We have rested the main players and, uh, and we will give a uh, uh, chance to the youngsters and also the new uh, foreign players as well. Yeah. Okay, so you are taking a bit of chances here and giving everyone a go, which I suppose as the tournament wears on, that's what, uh, what's what you need to do. Uh, Pretty good. Uh, it's, uh, everything is uh, going so far well. 
and uh, we'll try our best uh, in this match, yeah? And uh, we're uh, putting 100% in every single game, yeah? Good luck for today. Thank you. Rashid, I'll get uh, you in here. What would you have done? Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yeah, we would like to bowl fast as well, you know. Uh, I think uh, uh, our team is much better while chasing, and so let's see. Uh, this was uh, what we had planned as well to bowl fast. So. Okay, your batsmen have been really good. Laurie Evans has been, has, uh, has Ratullah Zaizai and Luke Ronke in the last game. Bowling, however, maybe just your weakest suit at this stage? Uh, I think we, we bowled really well as well. Uh, but, you know, the wickets are very, very good for the bat on. So we just need to back up ourselves in the bowling unit as well. Uh, batsmen are, you know, scoring. They, they are, they are uh, making runs for the team. So we just need like to improve in some areas. And we have been... Uh, looking for so hopefully we will have uh, some uh, good bowling attacks in the upcoming matches wholesale changes in the bulk side they want to give everybody a chance but you're on six points what is your uh, viewpoint are you still making changes or are you playing your best side uh, I think everyone is good you know we have a very good backup uh, everyone is doing the best we have lots of changes in the last match previous matches as well we have given chances to each and everyone so we have only one change today Zamir is not playing and uh, Shokat Zaman is in so we just need to focus on playing good cricket good luck for today thank you so much well, there we go. That's the news from our chair in the middle. The bulk legends and their captain, Muhammad Nabi, have won the toss and will bat first. So, batting first, bulk legends. Um, I think uh, that's good news for them. They want uh, somebody in the top to fire for them. Uh, of course, uh, mentioning about Kabul, uh, Luke Ronke would like to get some runs under his belt. Zaya has been in great touch. He's really battered well, getting 100 as well. Colin Ingram, uh, Javed Ahmadi, Laurie Evans has uh, been uh, the man in form for the Kabul side as far as the uh, the batting's concern, of course, led by Rashid Khan. So, uh, Officials. Uh, pictures out there for the photographers, uh, all in redness, geared up. As far as this game is concerned, they're a very good outfit. And with me in the com box uh, is, uh, for the first time this afternoon, Charu Sharma. Good afternoon, Charu. Good afternoon, Ajay. Thanks so much. The fourth and final doubleheader in a row. Wow, we've all been busy, haven't we? So that's the Bulk Legends. Uh, Gale, unfortunately for them, hasn't fired just yet, but it's fantastic that uh, Mohamed Nabi has chosen to give the rest of the uh, overseas players a run because they must be wondering why they're here. So we've got Munavira and uh, Waller in today as well. And Ben Lachlan later on, who's been uh, without a match so far. But otherwise, uh, I'm glad that he's decided that, okay, time enough, we've done well enough. Let's give a, a, a big run to the rest of the players. Made one other change as well. Um, trying to remember that, we'll get it. Abdullah Mazari is in. And lots of other uh, of the big contributors no longer in this team, but it shows a lot of confidence and generosity by, uh, from Mohammed Nabi saying that okay, let's get everybody a run because we are definitely a short of a place in the final four. And um, just a quick reminder about that photograph there earlier. We'll get to it though. So here's the points tab table again. Kabul's one on uh, under. I'm not saying pressure, but just a, a bragging right really because they lost to the Bollock Legends last time around. And this time, of course, there's surely a bit of revenge on their minds. Hmm. Top of the table clash, Ajay. Always uh, fascinating to watch because it gives you an indication of uh, perhaps uh, the winner of the title itself. Yeah, you're right. And, you know, uh, as far as T20 is concerned, Charu, always important to uh, carry on that momentum. You know, it's so very important. You might have played well, but this could be just the other day, you know, because uh, you lose a game. You're just thinking what really happened in a huddle at the moment. Rashid Khan just having a word. Yeah, sorry, just to interrupt, Ajay, the, 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 people who've been watching the uh, Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League powered by Fog may notice that uh, the Kabul Zwanan oh, yeah, team have a very different colour on them. And that's because uh, they've got additional support and uh, their team, uh, the franchise, said, well, we're going to just do a whole new set of clothes. So, good for them. <laughs> Wonder if it's going to help their luck at all, uh, if any. But they've done well enough anyway. So, Luke Ronke leading it out as the keeper. Rashid Khan, of course, their captain, and uh, they will hope once again to keep these two quiet, particularly the man on the right, who uh, has not really done much. I think uh, the previous match kept hitting the bottom of the bat, had to change it a couple of times. I hope he's got the right bat in hand today. Yeah, you're right. I think uh, they really like, uh, as far as Balka concerned, that uh, Chris Gale should be amongst the runs because uh, always important. You might be spending some time at the crease, but how many runs you get at the end of the day, that's important. So it's uh, been a struggle for him. But still, a uh, lot of games remaining, so you want him uh, to come back uh, into the batting form. And he's such a big name. Once he can uh, really go after the bowling, it's going to be difficult to stop that Gale Storm. Yeah, big name, big boy, big bat. And I love the way he was swinging the bat when he walked in. Uh, like swinging a minor tree trunk. 
So that's his record internationally. Can't argue with that. Just brilliant. A great name to have any league, any tournament, anywhere, anytime. And I'm sure Mohamed Nabi and the rest of uh, those here at the Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League know and respect that, even though he may not have been in the runs uh, in this tournament. Munawira gets his first match, uh, the long and the short of it. But it's also nice to have a right left. Yeah, you're right. And I think uh, good game for him because uh, Ryan Tendis Gate and uh, Ray Vara, they've done really well. But just see the strike rate 122, over 2,000 runs, some experience behind him. And this is also interesting because they have someone like Wayne Pan in the ranks. And at times, opening the bowling, he has struggled uh, with his line. So uh, it's uh, not Wayne Pan to start with. It's going to be a spinner to start with as far as uh, the Kabul side are concerned. So interesting move here by Rashid Khan. I mentioned about Wayne Parnell uh, hasn't really got going, uh, has been expensive in the uh, early part with the new ball. So uh, change of plan here, trying something different. Anil Chaudhary, of course, uh, at the bowler's end. The Empire from India, very experienced. So all in redness, Gale on strike, the first ball of this match. That's the new gentle Gale. The last couple of innings, we've seen that he's just sort of patted the ball around and waited. Unfortunately, he couldn't power it on later when uh, he was more in. And this too starts with a gentle pat. We know that if he can just give it a little thump, it goes way over the boundary line. And uh, who alone knows, are we in for a Chris Gale special? Kabul's one on, we'll hope not. Yadil Shan is going to be on strike now. So opening up his account on the very first delivery, Chris Gale, left and right combinations you mentioned. Coming around the wicket, uh, just getting a bit of drift there. Nicely played, a lot of vacant spaces on the onside for the right-hander. So off the mark as well, Dilshan. It's a little strange there because uh, there was just a little hesitation taking that single, even though there was a huge gap in the field. Obviously, these two haven't uh, really been discussing the running between the wickets just yet. Well, we hope that's not a problem because Dilshan must know that you don't hurry Chris Gale through for either a quick single or an unnecessary double. The last few games, uh, Charu, we've seen uh, Chris Gale just take a bit of time early on, hasn't been in a hurry at all, probably just getting used to the wicket here, the surface, the conditions, very different. But more the time he spends the crease, the better. Ahmadi just darting in through. It's been uh, a slow start for him, hasn't got too many runs. A few starts uh, against uh, Nangahar, uh, Pakthia Panthers, 20 apiece. But really uh, not a big score so far under his belt. Yeah, uh, right arm off break bowler, particularly uh, meant to disturb Chris Gale here, the lefty. But of course, initially, we don't think there'll be too much spin at all. He's just darting it in and a couple going down leg as well. Oh, once again, pushed it through. So just another gentle pat down to long on for a single. And uh, the first over, no fireworks, four for no loss. So Bulk Legends win the toss, batting further, exactly what uh, Mohamed Nabi has done. Uh, one change for Kabul, four for Bulk Legends. So trying a few options, uh, Dilshan comes in, so does Malcolm Waller. Then Loughlin uh, makes a comeback into the side after missing a few games. So four changes in all for Bulk Legends, so really the thinking is very different. You know, Ajay, I like that. I mean, there's a lot to be said about winning momentum and winning all the matches and going to the next match with a lot of confidence. But I mean, God forbid, if there's some injury or whatever else, if you lose a player or two, uh, especially those of calibre, then will the others step up to the plate or not? So this is a good time for Bulk to test the bench strength, as it were. I mean, no disrespect, because the players who come in are also quality players, and this is their opportunity. Oh, Malik, what a beauty. First up to Chris Gale, moves away just a bit. Gale tentative. This is going to be a terrific contest. Yeah, you're right. A uh, bit of movement there. And that should excite uh, the left-arm seamer. 
doesn't have a slip in place. But with that slight movement, I just feel won't be a bad flaw. I just see a bit of movement there, lateral movement or tentative, as you rightly mentioned. Peach of a delivery there. He's bowled well. Uh, Farid Malik has got a good yorker as well. Yeah, great length too. Testing, probing. Uh, slightly fuller this time. But Gail, again, no backlift. I think he's content to just make sure that uh, he stays there for a while because we all know 20 overs, if he stays up even half that, he's going to get a big score, even on this pitch. Yeah, you know, but uh, as you mentioned, hasn't gone too many runs, so I feel uh, early on, just have a slip in place, never know. Always opportunity with the left arm, Seema bowling in, especially uh, the way movement he's got against the left-hander. Just have a slip in place. Come on, Rashid Khan. Get a man there. I agree, Ajay. Especially if Gail is being tentative. Nice and full. Fuller this time. So uh, he's bowling according to a plan, not giving Gail any width, any room, and nor the length that he can tonk. Well, seeing the surface today, it looks much better. Alistair did mention in his uh, pitch report, the pitch jog doctor, Alistair Campbell, that uh, more binding, the sheen, should be uh, more runs today. You see the surface. Yesterday, the cracks were visible, but the binding on this surface is very different. You can see the sheen as well, a different color to the wicket. So it looks much better. I think uh, full marks to the ground staff, the curator, they've done a wonderful job. Never easy. Yeah, they're magicians because you don't see any scuff marks. How they put it all together so quickly. Well done. Uh, just when I was praising him, drifting down leg, maybe that caught just the tip of the pad. And so, no wide. Good work as well by Luke Ronke behind the stumps. Bit of deviation there, clipping the pad, just erring in his line. They'd like to fire with the pad as well, Luke Ronke. Hazratullah Zazai, his partner, has done a terrific job. But just see uh, the ball just clipping the pad on its uh, way to the keeper, a bit of deviation, but does well. At times, uh, you're blocked by the batsman, so never easy. But really, uh, good glove work there. Yeah, I had to put in the dive, and especially when the ball is dipping, every once in a while you can miss the bounce. Oh, very tentative again. Gale looked like he wanted to play that in ultra slow motion. Just struggling. I think he's just struggling. It's uh, very obvious. You don't see the Chris Gale. He's just uh, his uh, foot movement away from the body. Oh, just reaching for that one. Very good line as well from uh, Farid Malik. Hasn't got the runs. He's got a man at uh, long on. Deep square leg for him. Ring of fielders on the off for Chris Gale. Well, these are tough times for the big man. Last ball of this great over. Oh! Fired right in. Kale just about dug it out. I think that big batter is once again suffering at the bottom. Is that uh, a maiden? I think it is. Well bowled. Two gone. Four for no loss. Don't see that very often. 11 deliveries for Chris Gale and he's on two at the moment. Last over, the fourth maiden of uh, the Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League 2018. And what an over it was. Uh, last delivery as well. Right on the button there. Yorker in. Excellent bowling by Fareed Malik. He'll be high on confidence of bowling that maiden over. Well, the bulk legends have opted to bat first after winning the toss and they can't put bat to ball here. Wayne Parnell has been 50-50 uh, well, with his uh, bowling and today... He was not preferred, but uh, I wonder whether they should have given the spinner another over or so because he bowled reasonably well, and you don't want to break the spell from the Kabul Zwanan's uh, uh, angle. Just continue to keep it very tight. Up in the air. Yeah, against the right-handers, hasn't been a big issue for Panel. You know, he's bowled well, but uh, the problem is when the left-handers come, he's a bit erring in his line. Going to be interesting uh, what the plan is today against Chris Gale. Uh, yeah, sorry, Ajay. Here's a look at the century man. The only century scored in the Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League, powered by Fox so far, Hazrat Zazai. Wow, and what a 124 from 55 it was. Superb. Terrific hitting.
big hitting. And he's a big boy, so unfortunately he hasn't been able to match that thereafter. But uh, of course they'll be chasing today, chasing how much we don't know, but we expect he'll come in again with a bat. Warning a signal, Chris Gale, sent back, and rightly so. Would have been very tight in the end. Panel really up to it, charging up in his follow-through. You see the keenness from uh, Chris Gale for that single, wants to be off strike. <laughs> How about that? Chris Gale wants to be off strike? That was the last time we heard that. But, yeah, it, well done by Dilshan, just to send him back, because I don't think the single was there. And even one more step, and he'd not heard that call, he could have been in danger, because he's a big unit. Uh, the Titanic takes, takes a bit of time to turn around. That's much better, at least uh, middling up. On that occasion, Chris Gale. I think it's just a uh, charu question of just spending time at the crease. The more he spends time, I think he'll settle down, just play his shots. He's got all uh, the power. He's got a very good range of shots. Just about settling and getting his eyes in early in this innings. Yeah, but you have only 120 deliveries in the T20 game, so how long? Well, that was the first positive shot by Gale. And uh, this one tentative will earn him a run, just runs it down. That's better. Yeah, you're right. Uh, not too many uh, overs or deliveries uh, left, but I think uh, just about, you know, one or two overs, uh, just uh, seeing uh, exactly what's happening, how the wicket is behaving. Oh, direct hit would have been a goner. Once again, a very tight single in the end. Tight. It was ridiculous. So, what's with the calling here? He tapped it to a third man, and uh, Dilshan, did he take a start or not? He just gave up completely. So, we'll have to say, very lucky to be there. Kabul missing out an opportunity. They had plenty of time to run him out. Up and over. Nobody there. So, that will be our first fog boundary. Very welcome for the bulk legends. Winning the toss, batting first. No runs till uh, the third over. Just the final boundary now. Ten for no loss after three. Really impressive for Eid Malik in the last over. Bowled really well. Or made it over. Panel conceding a boundary of uh, his last delivery. Going to be a gale on strike once again. Down the leg side. Not a great delivery. That should be a wide. Yes, that's a call from the Empire. Yeah, we can see that Malik continues to try and bowl very full. Got the line wrong, but uh, he, I think everybody knows that that's how to keep gale quiet. Now, Manavira. Short, wide, a gimme, and he took it. Yeah, that's what you call a stand and deliver. Not much uh, footwork, just delivering, getting a boundary, the result he wanted. Dilshan. But the focus is on Chris Gale, because 14 deliveries, just three runs for him. Up in the air, drops just short of Mohammad Nabi, but it's a no ball. Okay, will that finally... Get rid of the shackles here for Chris Gale, because now he can swing freely. And do we see a huge Pagiza or not? We'll see. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, gosh, that's a big one. They are trying to generate some pace. Uh, probably that's the reason. Just overstepping on that occasion, Farid Malik. But now the license is there for Chris Gale. What does he do? They can't change the field. He's got a man a deep square leg, long gone. Does he bowl a joker? Or perhaps very short. Only two options. Hold on to your seats. And bang! That's the fog maximum we were looking for. Chris Gale got the opportunity of a free hit. And he delivered a Spagiza. Oh, what a strike. This could be the turning point for him. What a shot there. Middling it perfectly. Lovely execution in the slot. Bowling much fuller on this occasion for Eid Malik. And he was up to it. Just making room for himself, carving it away. Chris Gale, exactly what he's known for. Yeah, I think he was expecting that. It had to be pretty full. So, uh, in fact, he even perhaps took a half step back. And it turned out to be right in the slot. I tried to be clever. 
Nice and delicate to short third. Uh, luckily, no running between the wickets error this time. It was pretty suicidal the last time they took a run to short third. Yeah, you're right. Uh, at times, there has been a bit of a hesitancy in running. But this is uh, exactly what happened uh, in the last over when Pandal was bowling. He was out. He was out by a big margin. Required just a direct hit. Missing the stumps there. But just see, not even in the picture frame. He was struggling, Dilshan. Well, it actually it was Dilshan's call. And he didn't want to run at all. Gail just took off. And then Dilshan said, well, okay then. I'm going to try and get to the other side. Way short. Oh, that's pure timing. Very nicely played. Letting the ball come to him. Uh, just opening the bat phase, using the pace of the bowler. Does very well, Dilshan, on that occasion. Lovely strike. Yeah, it's good to see someone who's not really thrashing all over the place. Even the four that he hit uh, for Parnell, on Parnell, the last uh, ball of the last over. He just made sure that the bat was bat met the ball at the right time. So it's all timing. Of course, a little lucky here to pierce that gap. Very narrow gap between uh, backward point and cover point. Class act, Dilshan, so far because of those two boundaries. And uh, even the previous one he hit off Parnell, just didn't try and hit it too hard. But bat to ball, knew that it would go over the infield. Didn't try and hit it too hard, no slash. It was just uh, very well controlled is the word. Good balance as well, and that's the key, you know. Very nicely balanced so far. Once again, clobbering. That's a majestic. What a strike. Spakiza. Fog maximum. Yeah, I think he minded a bit. Uh, <laughs> that I said he wasn't hitting, hitting the ball hard enough. Well, he gave this one the treatment, of course. Uh, the length was just perfect. In the slot, went through with it on the up. And uh, saw it go all the way past the boundary. Handsome fog six. And this is what uh, T20 is all about. His first over was a maiden. So far, he's conceded 19 runs up in this over. Can you believe it? Kind of evens out a bit. A maiden and then 19 with a ball still to go. Or two, actually, still to go. Change the field now. The fielder at uh, deep third man just coming in. Uh, Wayne Parnell and Midon just moving back for uh, Dilshan on strike. It's a ring of fielders on the off. Why well, have a long on unless you're bowling length? Oh, no, again. Malik. This is terrible. Can't be conceding so many extras. Uh, really, uh, that's a freebie. Got to be afraid once again. We saw with uh, Chris Gale. Really encashed on that uh, free aid. Getting up a good uh, strike. And once again, overstretching. He's not a very tall man. You know, this time only just. And I think Chris Gale would be gutted that he's not on the striking end. He must have been screaming for a single, hoping for a single. So let's see what Dilshan Manavira can do with the free hit. There is a long on. And uh, a deep square leg. So not on the leg side now, Malik. Oh, gosh, a no-ball again. This one goes for a four. Malik overstepping. So the free hit goes for a, a boundary, and it's another no-ball. This is just terrible for Malik. And I say, especially after that opening maiden, this is just uh, very forgettable. Yeah, I think he's got to mark his uh, run-up again, because uh, the last ride is he's really overstepping. He's uh, probably garnering, uh, trying to garner that extra yard of pace or whatever it is. He's just... Uh, his rhythm is being spoiled at the moment. Just see, once again, yes, there's a right call. Some part has to be behind the line. The line, remember, belongs to the empire. Yeah, I will never understand why bowlers stand there and try and argue with the empire or try and sort of wonder where their foot was like they were watching. Well, you just have to come back and watch this later, Malik, on television to see what happened. There's no sense arguing with the empire. Just go back to your run-up, make sure you got the right uh, uh, markings. And stick to them. I'm not so sure the skipper's very impressed at all. He's got, well, the teapot look. Once again, a no ball. Oh, what's happening here? He's struggling. He's really struggling, uh, Farid Malik. What an over it has been. 26 runs so far. Making a move on. In fact, 27 now with that uh, single as well. So, really, it's been a very expensive. Started off with a maiden over. This is the fourth one up of this uh, Gulbar Afghanistan Premier League. But after that, it's been a struggle for him. 
again, very, very marginal. I'll have to say he's a little unlucky here. Okay, so guess what? Chris Gale did cross, and now he has a free hit waiting for him. Where's it going to go? Oh, big swing on the offside, and that is just inside, I think, the boundary line. So we'll give it a fog boundary. Oh, is that six? The umpire's happy to signal it. We might take another look. Was that a six, Ajay? You could see it better. Yeah, Wayne Parnell at mid on. He was uh, just signaling that it was a six. You see, one handed, in fact, uh, by Chris Gale, just freeing his arms. Very nicely done. Just see where the ball landed. That's going to be interesting. Just right on the skirting. Yes, that's going to be a six. So that was a right call as well. Maximum. Okay, so what's the good news here? The previous ball was not a no ball. Again, nice and full. What a terrific end. <laughs> Malik not too pleased. Well, you just have yourself to blame with those no balls. So four, the four overs finally over. 43 for no loss. So, 33 runs coming in the last over. Can you believe it? He was really struggling, uh, Farid Malik. Starting off pretty well. There's going to be a change in bowling. Shahidullah now coming in. Changing uh, his bowlers here, rotating his bowlers, Rashid Khan. Going to be interesting when he comes in to bowl himself. Munavira will be the man on strike. Uh, he's done well so far, Shahidullah. Three wickets for him in his uh, so far matches he's played. Sixth game for him, two for 18, his best. It's been decent. He started off uh, with a new ball a few times. Well, it's hard to feel sorry for Malik. All his own fault, really. One no ball, bad enough, but uh, four. Up in the air. Oh, nice diving effort there, Laurie Evans. I think at uh, mid-off. Yeah, that was a good save. That ball was struck well. It was traveling. Laurie Evans at mid-off doing a very good job coming down the track. He's quite nimble-footed. Good bat flow as well. Juicy uh, full toss converting into, but uh, very well done. Never easy with that bounce. Yeah, laid his body on the line. Laurie Evans for his team. Gale unable to find the gap, but just a little more aggressive now. That's good to see from the bulk legends' perspective. Yeah, sometimes you need that, you know, uh, confidence as a batsman and that free hit that uh, Chris Gale got was very important for him. Bang. That's uh, very nicely struck. That's going to be fog maximum. Spagiza, they're not missing on anything. The 50 up as well for the legends. Yeah, how easy did he make that look? Stuck his right foot forward. Got to uh, the pitch of the ball, saw it well. Didn't really try and hit it too hard, I think. Yet, of course, it went sailing over the boundary line. Luckily uh, for the organizers, it stopped just short of going onto the roof. Bounced back in. So, I think we'll be okay with that ball. We think, but it still hasn't come back. Somebody needs to go and fetch it. There it is. Uh, going to be difficult to retrieve it. Need a few people out there. Probably the new box might be out. So close, yet so far. <laughs> well, there is somebody there, so we'll find it soon enough. But yeah, good to see Gail back in uh, some kind of aggressive form because as we've been talking about, he hasn't really worked out in this tournament at all. And being such a big name, there has to be some amount of pressure, even though he seems to take it well enough. But I'm sure that was mounting. And the team uh, might have all been sort of whispering a bit, saying, well, are you really the same as you were? Or is it something that we will never get to see in this tournament? So I hope that he gets on to a big one today. Uh, Kabul's one on may not be wishing that. Yeah, even today, you know, when he started off, Charu, he was uh, just struggling a bit with his timing, tentative as well with his footwork. But that free it did him a world of good. The license was there, then uh, hitting a mighty six. Now he's looking at different batsmen altogether. And that's what a start can do. Uh, those uh, few runs early on can do to a batsman. So Shahid now comes over. Just trying to maybe dart it in. 
Can't be bowling length against uh, this man, Chris Gale. He's just waiting for something there in the slot. That's much better. Back of length. But be careful with the running. Has been an issue between the two. Haven't really, uh, I think, batted uh, alongside both of them on many occasions. Ah! Down the leg side. Just clipping the pad, probably. That's the indication as well from Anil Chaudhary. Five of us gone, 50 without loss. of uh, broadcasters who are showing this uh, inaugural Gulbahar uh, Afghanistan Premier League 2018. We're going all around the world. And that last over from uh, Farid Malik went all around the ground. So we've got a change of bowling. Still in the power play and Rashid Khan coming on from the pavilion end. Doesn't normally operate in the power play, although he's done so uh, at least once to my recollection in this tournament. Key passage of play this, you'd reckon. It's actually been uh, quite harshly dealt with uh, in the last couple of matches as well. That's a good shot. Good use of the feet by uh, Dilshan Munawira. Finding the gap between extra cover and mid off with only two fielders outside the circle. Gets value for his shot. A fog boundary and good afternoon to Alistair Campbell. Afternoon, Brian. Afternoon, everybody. Yeah, they started off rather sedately, but they free flowing at the moment. Clubs another one down the ground not uh, out the middle of the bat so just be a single should have been a two but Chris Gale's not interested in coming back he wants some of the strike I reckon 55 for nine we're uh, in the sixth over and they look like getting nowhere near that uh, total after three overs so uh, you mentioned that uh, he went for a few Brian yeah against Nangahar and Kandahar 38 and 37 respectively and just picking up the one wicket so he'll look to bounce back here today and don't bet against him. Yes, that Kandahar effort, you might recall, included 22 off a single over. Hazratullah. The 100 maker in the tournament thus far. Well, you've got to give uh, Dilshan Munawira marks for uh, trying to hit the ball as hard as he can. If there were uh, runs on offer for that, well, he'd get uh, a six every time. He really is almost swinging himself off his feet here. Yeah, I don't know if it's the smartest way to play. Rashid Khan, prior to that uh, previous shot, just had two balls left. Surely you just want to see him out. Not so. He's just lobbed him over mid on. <laughs> That's an excellent stroke. He's always... Uh, Done it his way, Chris Gale. Fog maximum to end the power play. 63 for none. End of the power play, the Park Legends flying. 
63 without loss. That includes 53 in the last three overs. Javed Ahmadi is going to operate now from the Sharjah club end. Yeah, there'll be a few more people patrolling the boundary, but the way these blokes have been hitting it, they need to be in the stands. Especially with bowling like that. And it's almost a miraculous catch. In the end, it's a spagiza. Fog maximum. Rashid Khan out there at deep mid wicket. And he almost pulled off an absolute blinder. And again, six more. It's raining sixes here at Sharjah Cricket Stadium. And the wheel's falling off here for uh, Kabul. Oh, they're going the distance. What a shot this is. Munawira, he's not holding back. He is going at everything. Full toss, first delivery, long off the second. And the result is two fog maximums. Javed Amadi under pressure here. Massive pressure. This is the best power play score for the Bork Legends in the tournament so far. 45 for one, 51 for one, 56 for three, 44 for one, and yesterday 48 for one. So they're going nicely here. It just beggars belief that after three overs, they were 10 for none. Crazy. Well, bear in mind, after four overs yesterday, in their match against Paktia Panthers, they were 18 without loss. So it's been a concerted plan just to keep wickets in hand early on. Here's that first six again. Rashid Khan leaping in the air, but not able to pull it down. Typical Rashid Khan, that putting himself in what he imagines is going to be a real hot spot in the field. If you look around the stadium, it's the only shady spot as well. <laughs> Captain's prerogative. Simon Helmut must have heard you there. He thought that was funny. Wait up! Joking aside, no wonder Simon Helmut's laughing because um, everything's going his side's way at the moment. Seven overs gone, 78 without loss. can't see the white flag up there but it uh, seems to have been raised by uh, some of the Kabul bowlers in the last few overs Wayne Parnell back into the attack well Dilshan Munawira making his first appearance of the tournament and uh, on the basis of what we've seen so far I think he would probably uh, be in a few people's fantasy teams where you can create your own of course at uh, myteam11.com test your skills and win big prizes including uh, cash prizes too Munawira 42 from just 18 balls and again swinging hard suppose he's got license to do that now with um, 10 wickets in the bank after the start they've got the likes of Bopara and Tendiscata to come. Yeah, just keep going hard. That's the way he plays. He's in the zone. And why not when you're in this sort of position? 42 of just 20 deliveries for Munawira. He's seeing it big. Well, bold, giving himself a little bit of room and... Uh, he went a little bit early, did uh, Dilshan Munawira, and Parnell followed him.
Yeah, really good piece of bowling. Just saw him out the corner of our eye. He didn't move too early. He moved uh, very late, so it was uh, well adjusted by Wayne Parnell. Again, just a little bit of a breakdown in communication between these two uh, batsmen. Running between the wickets hasn't been uh, perfect so far, I think that's fair to say. Yeah, not, not the strongest suit between these two. <laughs> I think they, they're both a bit iffy when it comes to uh, the yes-no weight part of uh, batting. But they're still there together. Helped on its way, and it's gone for four. Well, that was a little bit awkward for the fielder out there because uh, he was looking straight into the sun and it bounced awkwardly. So he had to make a couple of decisions. Did he come in and try and make the catch or did he hang back to stop the uh, four? In the end, he didn't either. And I think he might have got a little bit of an, an awkward bounce off the surface. It might have kicked just a little bit too. But that doesn't make Wayne Parnell feel any better. Yeah, hitting by square on the, the leg side, you would expect it to spin from right to left and that went left to right. He's come back well, though. Terrific over from Wayne Parnell. Eight bold, 82 for none. Eighty two without loss then, a flying start for the Bulk Legends. And that includes seventy two in the last five overs. Literally a flying start. We're not far from uh, Sharjah International Airport here. One of the lesser known airports in the uh, the UAE. But a very nice one actually. I've flown from there once or twice. Muslim Musa. He's going to have uh, a twist now down at the Sharjah club end. They just need to stem the bleeding a little bit here, or well, more than a little bit, to uh, Kabul. He's been very tidy in the tournament thus far. As Muslim Musa, an all-rounder, of course. And those figures certainly very, very useful indeed. I mentioned, of course, that uh, these two batsmen now have license to go hard with the likes of Tendiskata and uh, Bopara to come. But let's not forget uh, Darwish Rasuli, who batted three yesterday in the win against the Pactia Panthers and played extremely well. 44 from just 28 balls, three fours and two sixes. That's got to be a wide. Simon Helmut was telling us uh, yesterday when we interviewed him uh, during the match that uh, Rasuli, he'd understood, had uh, a reputation for being a good player of spin. And of course, with Rashid Khan having um, overs up his sleeve later on in the innings, that could be uh, very useful. Tender Scarter, of course, uh, not playing today. Pulled out towards deep mid wicket. That'll be four more. Yeah, too short from Musla Musa. And uh, Chris Gale able to just stand and deliver. Didn't really go back, just rocked back slightly and uh, muscled it away through mid wicket. He's such a strong bloke. Dismissed it from his presence. Actually played it off the front foot in the end. Oh, it's up in the air. Has he got all of it? Yeah, he has. Nowhere near the middle of the bat. But it's Chris Gale we're talking about. Another spagiza. A 
again looking at the bottom of his back, Gail. He's such a strong man. Laurie Evans was down there, and it's just a retrieval mission for him. Third man up in the circle. You know, I mentioned, of course, about Bopara and uh, Tender Scarter. They played extremely well yesterday, so they've, got, they've had a rest today with the likes of Malcolm Waller and uh, Ben Lochlin getting an opportunity. A good old friend laughing, Ben. He's uh, not played for uh, three games, and uh, well, he gets another crack in this particular game to try and cement his place and the team moving forward. That's no good. And he's missed out. Chris Gow should have left it. Would have been a wide. Dot ball ensues. Nine ball, 93 for none. Six bowlers used in the nine overs uh, that we've seen so far. Shahadullah is one of those six. Out. At last. Kabul get a breakthrough. Munawira goes, looks at the bottom of his bat. Parnell takes the catch at extra cover. And that really is absolutely vital as far as uh, Kabul are concerned desperate to get that uh, incision into uh, the bulk innings and they've done it yeah let's try and muscle the way through the offside right off the toe end of the bat Wayne Parnell's not going to drop those they needed that breakthrough did the Kabul's one out they were fetching leather to all parts of the ground Munawira gone for 46 93 for one now I mentioned a short while ago about uh, Darwish Rasuli and how well he'd played yesterday. And he's got another opportunity now to uh, show us what he can do. That best of 44 was in that uh, match 24 hours ago. And off the mark straight away. <laughs> he started sprinting the first, thinking that uh, he'd have a possibility of a two. And Chris Gale wasn't interested in that. This is why he's here. Yeah, the idea was right. No problem with that. It's one of his strong areas. Just wasn't able to get the elevation. And uh, yeah, that's what he's wanting to do. Hit it up and over. But all he succeeded in doing was hitting it straight to Wayne Parnell. Fantastic. It was in the slot and Gales dispatched it. That's an enormous hit. Spagiza. And that brings up the 100. Oh, it's an absolute beast from Chris Gale. That has gone onto the roof. I tell you what, it's a long ball to get it uh, even just into the grandstand at our commentary box end here. And that has cleared everything and probably uh, gone over the roof. We'll see there. Has it gone over? Oh, maybe just takes one bounce. Here it is. <laughs> Bouncing a few times on the top there. Enormous strike from Chris Gale. He looks like he's uh, in the zone today. And I tell you what, it doesn't get any bigger than that. Change of gloves. Just wants uh, a bit of grip on uh, the willow. 
just whenever he decides to go big, invariably, when he hits it in the middle, well, there's no chance. No field is big enough. But even when he miss hits it, he's so strong that uh, tends to be able to clear the boundary. 36 balls for his 46. Was a bit circumspect up front, but has caught up big time. Off the toe end of the bat, but that's gone for six as well. Brings up his 50, Chris Gale from 37 balls, seven sixes and one four. And this is his 350th 2020 match. So uh, marking that milestone with a, another milestone in a career full of them. We were wondering when the big man would turn up. Well, here's your answer. He's uh, back and back with a vengeance. That's gone a country mile as well. End of 10, we're halfway, 107 for one. Started slowly, Chris Gale, but now I think uh, he's making a move on. Uh, what a half century for him. The first for him in the Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League. 53 of just 38 deliveries. Uh, after that free hit, he's looking a different batsman when he got that six. So changing his options here, bringing on uh, Colin Ingram now, leg break bowler from the Sharjah Club end. 37 wickets for him. Oh, but he's bowling all spinners. And starting with that all spin, uh, what a strike there. Majestic. Shpagiza has gone some distance out of the stadium as well. Fog maximum and with me is Hamid Hassan for the first time. Good afternoon, Hamid. You must be enjoying this batting. Thank you, Ajay. Yeah, absolutely outstanding batting from Chris Gale. And there is no one to stop him right now. Again, sh looks like Shpagiza. Beautiful shot. Fog maximum Shpagiza from Chris Gale. And he is just charging. There, there is a no one to stop him, and he's taking every single ball out of the boundary. You know, they say you need one good knock to come back into form, and uh, this could be the knock for him. He's trying a few things, uh, tough for the keeper as well. That's going to race away. Chase for the field, uh, does well in the end, up uh, sliding. Couple of runs up. Just checking on that, uh, whether it uh, was a four or not. Just checking with the, the third empire. Whether it is a uh, two touch the skirting when he pushed the ball in. Now, from this angle, it's a uh, little difficult to make out. Probably from the other angle, we might just see whether it is a uh, two touch the skirting or not. Go slide. I think he's. Uh, Probably done well in the end, just pushing the ball through. In uh, yes, and then so looks to be okay. But a couple of more runs here, and runs are coming thick and fast. That was a leg break. We mentioned about him, but it really doesn't make a difference whether you're bowling off spin or leg spin to this man. The form he is in, the way he's batting, he won't miss an opportunity. This man is outstanding. Absolutely classic batting. Once again, Chris Gale, he's showing the power. And he's complained for the no ball. Oh my God. That's massive. Out of the park. Onto the roof. Road. And another maximum for Shpagiza from Chris Gale. You can see the dugout happy and they're smiling. Everybody enjoys batting. Even we also. Yeah, just a flick of the wrist, but that was uh, really not big, but huge. It's gone over the roof out there. They've changed a few balls. I'll tell you what, that man who's bringing the balls up is going to be very busy. The way he's batting. It's been uh, another very expensive over. 26 uh, from the over so far. 133 for one. 
everybody really enjoying the serve kind of batting from Chris Gale lost his partner Munavira for 46 his individual score of 46 or 25 but he's going strong at the moment and uh, well his partner as well what a strike and what an over for the bulk legends once again a lovely strike for maximum to win the 11th over 139 for one So the two most expensive overs, well, they have come in this uh, match so far. Fareed Malik conceding 33. The last over, Ingram conceding uh, 32. And yes, you can expect that when uh, Chris Gale is out there. Rashid Khan too has been expensive. And his only over conceding 13 runs. How did they stop this man? That's going to be the big question. Oh, I think uh, getting some pad, slight appeal as well. But no harm done. Pitching outside the leg stump. Couple of runs uh, but Chris Gale is back on strike. That's exactly why he was just uh, running gingerly, wanted to be back on strike. And that's the thing, Ahmed. When you're batting well, you always want to farm the strike. Definitely. The way he started very slow, and right now he's taking by milestone. He's closing to the 100 runs, and the way he batted, outstanding. Massive sixes. And the only option is for Rashid to take his wicket. Otherwise... The runs will be claiming up to 200, maybe more than that, because they still have nine wickets in hands and such a huge wickets left. It's a touch and go, close call. I think it's okay. It's a good save. Such a wonderful start also for Rasuli. Second ball, he hit a six. Well, his top score is 175, unbeaten. And just see the strike rate overall in his uh, T20 career. 148 out. Oh, Amazing. Oh, rush, oh, rush. Nearing the 12,000 mark. That's the reason he's uh, really a legend. Absolutely uh, brilliant figures, those. If they go at 14 runs per over from here, 261. I tell you what, if he's there, you never know what's going to happen. Oh, wow. That's a good delivery for Rashid Khan. He's got to uh, just stem the flow of runs. The rich have to be careful with Chris Gill because he's not interested in singles. Just give him a strike and he will give you six runs easy. Yeah, Rasuli would be knowing a thing or two about Rashid Khan. Uh, I mean, that they would have played a lot back in Afghanistan. Yeah, they play in the same under-19 team. And they were teammates, and Rasuli is one of the best batsmen in under-19 in emergence. And he is also a very handy wicket-keeper. So such a good talent for Afghanistan in the future. And this man, Rashid, outstanding. Chris Gale, quick runs. Oh, it's a bad throw. Yeah, scampering for that run. The 50-run partnership also up between the two. It's 144 for one. You want to get to those big scores, you need partnerships. And that's exactly what Bulk Legends have done so far. Match number 14, 93 for the opening wicket. Munavira and uh, Chris Gale. Putting up 93 of 59. Then 51 of just 70 deliveries. And that was mainly thanks due to Chris Gale's efforts. He's the man on strike as well. Not timing it. I'll just pick up one more run. But coming back to Rasuli, uh, how is he done? Uh, 
in the uh, tournaments back home in Afghanistan, in the local tournaments. And is he, uh, Hamid, knocking the doors of the national side as well? Just tell us something about Rasuli because in the last game, he was really very impressive. Yeah, he's an impressive player. He impressed everyone. He was with national team in a training camp. And uh, he scored a lot of runs back in domestic, in under-19, in uh, emergence. And he's a capable of batsman. He can play any time for the national squad. So he's just waiting for the call. And uh, the good thing is also a very good wicket keeper and absolutely a brilliant fielder also. So he's 3-1. You know, a lot of our viewers would also like to know what is the structure of domestic cricket in uh, Afghanistan because, uh, you know, you have done so well individually, uh, you've been a fast bowler. But what's, what's the structure like? Because, like, you know, every country has a different structure. What kind of tournaments you have? Because Afghanistan cricket has really progressed a lot. You've seen that in the Asia Cup, the way they played. So, uh, I think uh, the younger generation, the younger crop, how they're being uh, groomed out there, going to be very interesting. Yeah, thanks to ACB, they're making every year a uh, four-day cricket, uh, ODI domestic, and then T20 club cricket is there. So cricket is building day by day and growing. And it's a fantastic job uh, and a good effort from Afghanistan Cricket Board. They provide a, such a great platform to the players who's coming like emergence and youngsters, especially under 19. That's a beautiful shot from Rasuli. Fog maximum four. He's a good player. He's a very good player, and he can hit easy, like a ball. He, the ball from Musa was not good. Full toss delivery, and he picked it true to the square leg for the boundary. Yeah, that's a fog four, but not a great delivery as you mentioned from Musa. Just hurrying down the pad line, easy pickings uh, for Rasuli. The fine leg fielder inside the circle, really a giveaway. Wasn't very happy at all. The 150 up with that strike. Another good over so far for the legends. They're really batting well. Oh, run out. run out. Oh, goodness me. Chris Gale is run out. I tell you what, this was the only way today you could have got out. Because <laughs> the way he was batting, absolutely brilliant batting. Unlucky there, Chris Gale. But he's got to go. Deflection there. He was out of the crease. Uh, he's looking for that run. Really sad to see this end for Chris Gale. Just a bit of deflection, trying to save himself. And he was out of the crease, Chris Gale. But the way he was batting, really it was enjoyable. A very good innings coming back to form, Chris Gale. Out for 80 or 48. It's 151 for two. So in comes uh, Waller, getting opportunity today. Malcolm Waller, four changes in the lineup for the bulk legends. Uh, four fifties for him in his T20 career. 88th game for him is the uh, best 78. So he's a handy customer, and that one beaten those uh, 78 runs is career best so far. But he's here because of this. Really unlucky for Chris Gale. You feel, especially the way he was batting at the non-strike ends and uh, deflection there, out of the crease there. Chris Gale looking for that uh, single, just walking off, really saddened to a very bright innings from Chris Gale. Yeah, it's such a bad luck for Chris Gale. He was going too good and unlucky. He got run out. 151 for two after 13 overs gone.
They got the platform here. Seven overs left from here on for the legends in this innings. 151 for two. Surely looking something in the region of 230, 240. Still, they have wickets in hand. Uh, Shaidullah has been expensive. Although they got that one wicket. But coming back to the structure, Hamid, you were uh, just uh, elaborating on that. So, do you have a lot of uh, three-day, four-day tournaments back uh, home in Afghanistan? Yeah, as I mentioned before, the best structure for our young generation, even all international uh, the team players are still playing, like uh, the way they started, especially the one day. And then we have a four-day cricket. And right now, it's uh, Shpagiza coming, maybe coming soon. So the young talent who performing well, uh, they give him a chance in Ashpagiza and then there's a club cricket who's doing well. That's a beautiful shot, massive. Another maximum for Ashpagiza from Rasuli, the talented Rasuli. He show his skills and power, what a shot. Not a great delivery, a lot of time there. He's been up around for some time. Rasuli played well in the last game. A lot of time uh, rocking back, dispatching that with authority. Spagiza for maximum lovely strike from him. Oh, oh once again, <laughs> almost that deflection. We saw that wicket of Chris Gale. Don't want to see another one. That's really unlucky for the batsman. I think Rasuli just helping Kabul Zwanan to get the batsman out as much as he can. <laughs> Giving some room. Uh, just one runs. So, as I mentioned, like the platform is very wonderful and the way players are coming, uh, it's absolutely, the, the big thing is in front of your eyes. See the shot? Oh, lucky. No deflection to hit the wicket. But I tell you what, that wicket uh, for uh, the Kabul side of Chris Gale was a big one. End of uh, the 14th over, 160 for two. So, match number 14, Bulk Legends uh, win the toss, batting first, they have done well, pressure on the captain Rashid Khan, he's got to deliver for his side, pick up a few wickets, still two overs left for him, it's a quality act, Rashid Khan, on the full. Some of the innings from Chris Gale has uh, really put a lot of pressure back on the Kabul bowlers, not easy bowling against a man like Chris Gale, the form he was in. Started off slowly, I was a bit tentative early on, first two overs. But then after that free hit, when he opened up, Chris Gale absolutely took the uh, attack apart. Oh, very good delivery. Moral victory there will uh, result in a single. Getting a bit of turn up, uh, Rashid Khan, that should excite him. Yeah, Rashid is a very brilliant and intelligent bowler. So he's the only key to get some wickets or save some runs for the team because... A car, uh, hey. Oh, beauty! The googly master done it again. Well ball, Rashid. And there's the end of the Waller innings, just only three runs. What a beautiful ball. Yeah, bowling uh, much flatter. Deceiving the batsman. Didn't have much clue about that one. Malcolm Waller getting opportunity today, but uh, really missing. Didn't read it at all. That was a googly playing the wrong line, wrong shot. Nothing short, really. Poor shot selection by him and Waller has to go back. Couldn't do much. Rashid Khan is pretty happy. Exactly what he wanted. Out for three, Waller. Of four deliveries is 162 for three. Rashid Khan getting a very important wicket of uh, Waller. 
going to be uh, the captain now who comes in, Mohamed Nabi again, a very decent uh, bat as well. He's got a good strike rate. Just see the strike rate, absolutely amazing uh, this season in the IPL, APL, the uh, first edition. He's batted really well. He's a class act, uh, Mohamed Nabi, with the bat, with the ball. Such a cool customer. Captain to captain. Full toss, looking for two runs. Yeah, Nabi is such a wonderful player, and he played almost full ODI for Afghanistan, and he's the first Afghanistan cricketer to reach 200 T20 wickets. So such a great achievement for him, even for the country. Another appeal, beautiful ball. Now, this has been a very good over from Rashid Khan. He's really testing the batsman, uh, varying his deliveries, mixing it really well. Show that googly when he got the wicket of Waller. Slight appeal as well uh, on the last delivery, but looked like the impact was just outside the line of Austin. Rasuli really has to continue. Sharp single taken uh, and of a very good over. Successful one for Rashid Khan. It's 164 for three. Two skyscrapers there, Farid Malik and Colin Ingram, 33 runs and 32 runs respectively. Goodness me, absolute carnage. And still five overs to go amidst that carnage. Wayne Parnell, two overs for 10. Alistair Campbell alongside me as Darwish Rasuli gets off strike. He's done really well today, Wayne Parnell. He's been uh, indifferent in the tournament up to now. And Chris Gale, gee whiz. <laughs> I mean, he didn't even have to have two hands on the bat on occasion. And he hit it a long, long way. 80 of just 48 deliveries. And not a lot of uh, balls remained inside the boundary fence. Let's just put it that way. Well, he'll, he'll remember his 350th 2020 appearance, not just for uh, what he achieved um, with the bat, but also <laughs> one of the more bizarre ways you'll ever see of getting out. Well, we saw an incredible way uh, to get out last night when Karim Sadiq was caught off his inside edge, his, um, his back uh, calf and uh, the wicketkeeper's boot. And there's another one to add to the collection. We might well have seen 250, 260 being the score if Chris Gale had hung about. He was in that sort of mood. He was uh, depositing white kookaburras to all corners of uh, the Sharjah Stadium. 214, if uh, they go uh, the current rate, and 12 and 14. We'll have a look at that. They might get up to 230 if uh, somebody starts clouting it around the ground as we've seen up to now. Yeah, just conceded 13, Wayne Parnell. It's a terrific effort amongst everything that has gone on. Mohamed Nabi just new to the crease, but we know how big a ball he can hit. This is a previous ball. Interesting if that had been a direct. I'll tell you what, it would have been mighty close. That's oh, a really good over again. Just the four from it. Four singles and a dot ball. Uh, what could have been. He's got 2100s in this form of the game. 
next most by a player is seven. It could have been number 22 today. Should just be the one. And an end of a very good Parnell over. 16 bold, 169 for three. Seven bowlers used, the seventh of them, Colin Ingram, one over for 32. Poor old Colin, he's had uh, a pretty miserable tournament uh, thus far. Four innings, just 18 runs. And now he's probably thought, well, maybe I can turn things around, turn my fortunes around with the ball. Not so. That's thumped away by uh, Darwish Rasuli. Spagiza and this man again just underlining his potential. That's such a clean strike. We were, saw him in the last game, Rasuli. We were impressed, and he's giving us another masterclass here. Oh, it's a lovely free flow of the bat. And he knew straight away that it was going miles. Terrific strike. And now over long off, six more, another fog maximum. Well, I was about to say, you know, that um, all of a sudden, ball could hit the buffers. They've got nine off their previous two overs. It's acceleration time again now. Well, oh, this is textbook stuff, it really is. Doesn't get any better on the eye than that. It was in the slot, yes, but you've still got to execute. And a lovely free flow of the bat and way over Midov. Right, this is the over that they're going to try and uh, get back on track. Six, six, still four balls remaining. As a bowler, you're going, oh, heck, what am I going to do now? Where am I going to bowl this one? You know full well that uh, the batsman, in this case, Rasuli, is staring you down. It'll flick out to deep mid-wicket. Rashid Khan's out there. Just the single. Beautiful return from him to... Well, the new kit uh, isn't doing much for their luck, uh, Kabul, is it? They've got this lovely uh, powder blue outfit, which they've changed to today and will be wearing for the rest of the tournament. Nabi on strike now. Slashed hard for four more. Another fog boundary. Third man up in the circle, backward point there too, but he found the gap perfectly between the two of them. It went like an absolute rocket, that one. Yeah, he's uh, very adept at playing behind square on the offside, Mohamed Nabi. And he just clears the front leg, waits for it and slashes it away. Knew exactly where he was trying to place that. And uh, perfectly in the gap, up and over, couple of bounces into the boundary rope. 17 off four balls so far in this over. And you can add four more to that uh, tally. Another fog boundary. Oh, this is absolute carnage. No, oh, it's going pear shaped, yeah. It really is. Muslim Musa is going the proverbial distance. He just cannot get it right. Striving for the Yorker. And that's a full toss on leg stamp. Finally up in the circle, easy clipped away. 21, still a ball remaining. Oh, another uh, slower ball down the leg side and uh, helped on its way by Nabi. Four more, another fog boundary. 25 off the over, 17 gone, 194 for three.
Rashid Khan attempting to uh, stem the flow of runs. Pretty respectable figures in the context of uh, the score that the bulk legends have. This partnership now for the fourth wicket, 32 from just 15 deliveries. Six more. Well, we heard that Rasuli was a good player of spin, and he's just uh, clobbered one of the best spinners in the world over long on. Have a look at that step from Rashid Khan. He's not best pleased with this. Free flow of the bat again. He knew that uh, he had got just enough on it, I reckon. It wasn't a long way over the boundary. Have a look at that. Looks could kill. That brought up the 200. That's six. Still 16 balls of the innings to go. Flatter, quicker into the gap between deep mid wicket and uh, long on. Bit of tag team work on the boundary. Laurie Evans gets the throw in. Still two, though. Have a look at these uh, 50 splits here. The third 50, when Gale was uh, really going for it in just 18 balls. Oh, that's huge. That's onto the road. New balls. Don't even bother even trying to run after that one. Here comes a third umpire. He knew exactly what had transpired then. That's a lusty blow. Another fog maximum. And this is turning out to be another expensive over. The googly. And he just helped it with the spin. Watch ahead on the road. University Road there, it's, uh, well, it's a dangerous place to drive at this time of the day. Well, they're going to get the highest score of the tournament, uh, the Bulk Lenges today. That's uh, a given, really, with 14 balls remaining in uh, this particular innings. And they're going to eclipse... Uh, what this team, the Kabuls, won unchased against the Paktia Panthers, 219. So they know what it's like to chase a big total. <laughs> They're going to have to do that and then some. Looks like they might be chasing 230, 240 maybe. Well, that's into the gap for four more. Another fog boundary. Goodness me. 20 off that over. 25 off the over before that. Two overs still to go. It's 214 for three. It's a good pitch, make no mistake about that, but they haven't done themselves any favours. The Cobbles won on bowlers, they've been very indifferent in what they've served up here this afternoon. And the bulk legends have taken full toll, and another one, another fog maximum, trying to bowl the Yorker, missing his length, and Mohammed Nabi is not going to miss out there. This is absolutely remarkable. You might remember we spoke to Simon Helmot in the midst of uh, yesterday's game, against Paktia, and I think he'd said uh, then that his side had hit something like 26 sixes up to that point in the tournament before the match against uh, Paktia. I tell you what, they've hit 20 sixes today alone. Incredible. Oh, it's interesting how different coaches around the world ascertain how their teams are going to win games. Bulk Legends, 221 for three here. That's the highest score, the previous best. Cobbles won on that 220. And 
and then the Paktia Panthers, the 218. So uh, the Cobbles want to chase that total from the Paktia Panthers, and they're going to have to uh, chase another big one here. Oh, that's a no, it's a no ball. It'll be in the gap, won't quite go for four, but I tell you what, it's, it's going to be a free hit. They should have run two, but Mohammed Nabi set Rasuli back and said, hold on, son, I'll deal with this. I'll deal with the free hit. Oh, my word, Fareed Malik is having a nightmare. He's bowled front foot no balls in his opening spell, and now he's serving up the above waist high full tosses. Maiden 50 in 2020 cricket for uh, Darwish Rasuli with that single. I'm just going to see if it's uh, a boundary. No, Colin Ingram did well at long on. Here's a free hit. Ah, slower ball bouncer. Well done, Farid Malik. You should have at least had a swing at it. What are you doing, Mohammed Nabi? He was totally perplexed by the delivery and uh, didn't bother even swatting his bat at it. Excellent innings from Darwish Rasuli. He's taken his opportunity. He didn't play early on in the tournament. In the last two games, he's been given an opportunity. And I tell you what, he's going to be one of the first names they're going to have to write down. They're going to have a very difficult selection conundrum coming up the bulk legends because everybody is putting their hand up. That's up in the air. And I uh, reckon that'll be another fog maximum. Mohammed Nabi carries on his merry way. He missed out the free hit, but he's certainly not going to miss out there. That's now 126 runs in sixes alone. This is right up Nabi Street, this situation. He's a lovely clean striker of the ball. Again, clearing the front leg, full swing of the bat, over extra cover. You get nothing for length on this pitch, and that's exactly what Farid Malik uh, served up then. Unbelievable. Farid Malik bowled a maiden today, and yet still, not even uh, at the end of his third over, he's got uh, none for 48. And Mohammed Nabi is 37 or 14 balls. That's how destructive he can be at the back end of an innings. Oh, that's better. Peel, he's going to give him. Yeah. He's uh, finally got one in the right area. There's Farid Malik, and he's got his man. He's uh, been through a bit of trauma today, there's Farid Malik, and this will soothe the pain somewhat. Nabi's hobbling because that's caught him uh, very painfully on his, on his right instep. He was also looking at the bottom of his bat. He's waiting uh, just to see if it's OK in terms of the front foot. Yep, no problems there. Didn't get the bottom of the bat, actually. I think the bottom of the bat hit the um, hit the ground. The ball hit the instep. And umpire Anil Chowdhury got his finger up to say uh, to Nabi, on your way, out for a really terrific 37. It's 2.29 for four. Gulbadin Nabe, at first ball. Well, he could come in with license to uh, throw the bat. That's exactly what he did. He got that one right off the bottom of the bat. And Colin Ingram at long on takes the catch. So Farid Malik ends up uh, with two wickets off the last two balls he's bowled today. There's the LBW of Mohammed Nabi. And no problems with that. That was absolutely plumb. Doesn't get much more plumb than that, really. But Gulbadin Naib, he departs as well. Out for a golden duck. 2.29 for five.
Mervez Ashraf in for the final over. He'll be at the non-striker's end, and this is why. It's a lovely stroke. Great form. Just didn't hit it anywhere near the middle of the bat. And Colin Ingram, he's not going to drop those. But uh, you can't blame Gulbadi Nape. He had to throw the willow at it. Now then, Wayne Parnell, he's going to be entrusted with bowling the last over, and he's picked up a wicket. It's an inside edge. It's a good catch from the keeper. And uh, just looks like maybe they want to uh, have a check. Luke Ronke has uh, claimed it, I think. But the batsman stood and the umpires uh, have decided to go upstairs and just see whether it carried or not. The soft signal is out, so they're happy that it has carried. But uh, they just want to make sure. And uh, we'll soon see the footage and uh, be able to show you at home that, uh, or whether it did carry or not. Ahmed Shah Pakteen making the signal to the third umpire. Bismillah Jan Shinwari. Little inside feather. Obscured from that angle. Oh, it is uh, obscured, isn't it? It's hard to see. I think if we slow that down, we might be able to see that uh, it has gone in. I don't see an issue with uh, Ronke. Normally when you scoop it, if it's on the one bounce, and you'd see a different angle, you'd see a different method. But when it does go in like that, he's able to complete the roll and really not move the gloves. That's uh, the giveaway for me. But it's tough to see from that angle. This angle uh, will be even tougher, I think. Yeah, that's a, a struggle. So bear in mind that the soft signal is out. So there has to be conclusive evidence to overturn that decision. And if there's no conclusive evidence, then the on-field decision will stand. And uh, Wayne Parnell will have his wicket, which looks like that'll be the case because that uh, is the best angles we have. Unfortunately, the batsman is in the way. So it doesn't give us that uh, angle. And uh, the third umpire, well, there's only uh, one thing he can do, really, is pass it back down on field and get them to uphold the decision they gave in the beginning. This is the one. So uh, the batsman obscures where this ends up. That's what I'm talking about. It just If there's a scooping action, the wicketkeeper is moving forward. But if it does go in cleanly, I think he's rolling sideways. And I think that that, uh, that is OK. The odd thing is, of course, there, that Ahmed Shah Pakteen actually gave the batsman out. And then, all of a sudden, there was the consultation. You could see there from uh, that replay with uh, umpire Pacteen raising his finger. If there's nothing else, there's uh, the third umpire. It's, uh, <laughs> it is what it is. You just got to go back on and say, soft signal was out. Therefore, that's uh, upheld. And you can uh, tell the batsman to be on his way. This is uh, the best he's going to get, and that's what I'm talking about. It just seems to me, when it comes through, that uh, that's okay. But it, he is obscured, and uh, it's very difficult uh, to tell whether it went in cleanly from that angle or not. As you saw in the background, <laughs> the index finger going up, and that's because he hit it. So he's probably giving it out based on the fact that he did get the inside edge. That's not in dispute yet. What's in dispute is whether the ball carried or not. I suppose I'm a bit old school here, Alistair. It would be great if we could get a situation where we could simply accept the word of the players. Did you catch it? Yes. I'm on my way then, from a batsman's point of view. And you know when you've uh, caught it, really. And I think Luke Gronke would say, guys, it's out. I've caught it. And if he's uh, said that, then I agree with you. You should be happy to be on your way. That's uh, the only decision that can come of that. Bear in mind that the soft signal upstairs was out. There was no conclusive evidence to overturn that. And Rasuli. What an innings he's played. 50 of just 27 deliveries. Been an outstanding hand here for the Bulk Legends. He has to go 229 for six now. Ikram Ali Kale in at number eight. He's not uh, exactly had a great deal of time in the middle in this tournament. One not out from one ball against Paktir and uh, five against Nangaha from eight deliveries faced.
Well, bold Parnell. Quite remarkable figures that Wayne Parnell is returning here, uh, Alistair. He's got four deliveries left. He's got one for 16 out of a total of 230 for six. And bear in mind, he bowled in the uh, power play when Gale and Munawira were in. Just goes to show how far everyone else has travelled. They have gone the distance here today. Right, getting the field uh, just right. Marwes Ashraf, the big unit, will be on strike. And uh, he'll be trying to find the boundary, make no mistake. It's gone straight up in the air. Rashid Khan's coming round to get under it, and he can't hold on. And it's gone for a fog maximum, Spagiza. Gee, he had a fair crack at this. He was nearly off his feet, was Marway Sashraf. And it didn't hit anywhere near the middle of the bat, but he's such a powerful individual. He was able to get it just over. Good effort from Rashid Khan. Have a look at this. It's gone up and up and up and up and continues. And, uh, well, he can't make the grab in the end, Rashid Khan. Fielder out on the boundary, sending that return in was um, Hazratullah Zazai. And we're going to need a, a Hazratullah special here if uh, Kabul are going to get uh, anywhere near this total. This uh, Case Ahmed ready to go if required. Two balls left in the innings. Hazratullah again. Righto, one ball remaining in this quite remarkable innings of the Bulk Legends. 238 for six. Just to uh, put you in the picture, they were 10 for none after three overs. And this is what's transpired. It's been uh, outstanding hitting. 22 sixes thus far to go along with 12 fours. And is there one more? It's up in the air. It's gone a long way back. What a strike that is. A fitting way to end the innings. A spot geezer from the Wais Ashraf and after their allotted 20 overs they have compiled a monumental 244 for six 23 sixes and 12 fours and Mervez Ashraf leaves with a smile on his face and no wonder three balls he's faced in the innings 13 not out and uh, as if to rub salt into the wound that was uh, straight into the Kabul uh, dressing room That'll be a subdued place, that Kabul dressing room, because, uh, goodness me, their bowlers have had an absolute hammering here. Let's have a look at the uh, scorecard. Gail and Munawira, the new opening pair, they started off in very subdued fashion, but ended up adding 93 as an opening stand before Munawira departed. Rasuli came in and played a terrific hand himself. That's uh, two successive days that he's batted beautifully in that number three position. A maiden uh, 50 for him. This, remember, Chris Gale's uh, 350th 2020 international. Mohamed Nabi got in on the act as well. There's the bowling figures. And if you're uh, a Kabul supporter, look away now. Because apart from uh, the effort from Wayne Parnell, and even he got some stick towards the end, everyone else really did get hammered. Right, let's go downstairs to AJ Mera. I think he's got the universe boss with him. Yes, that's right. I've got Chris Gale with me. Chris, what an innings. You know, a lot of people are waiting for this. Chris Gale to fire. Yeah, a lot of people have been waiting for this. Um, it's good to be among the runs today. And, you know, to actually post a total like 244 um, on a very good wicket. You know, we have to give credit to, you know, we go about it in the batting department. Um, Dilshan kind of take the pressure off me a bit early. So that was fantastic to build a partnership with him. And eventually, in the middle period, you know, you know, I've been explosive, actually, you know, get an half-century first one. But I think the thinking from your uh, point of view was very good. You know, you took your time initially just sort of waiting for the loose balls. And that free hit, after that, you really blasted all over. 
Yeah, uh, sometimes they tend to get the first boundary and then you know, things actually come into play. Um, but you know these guys are actually looking to bowl full, and you know I think that's the best option on this on this wicket as well. Uh, you just wait my turn. You know when the momentum come my way, then actually execute and, and, and make make it count. You know to be honest with you. But um, like I said, this is the best wicket, and I'm glad I get some runs. I'm um, hopefully in the next couple of games um, I can carry on, and hopefully in the semi final as well. Hard luck the way you got out. You know missed that three figure mark. That's the only way Chris Gale could get out today. Yeah, it was that that was unfortunate, um, but that's that's the game of cricket. You know these things do happen, and you know Darwish you know batted well, another 50 to his name, and you know like I said, it's a good 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 team effort batting wise. Uh, we got we got to go out there and defend it. Uh, it's a good wicket, and we'll see what happens at the end of the day. I think this should be enough for your side, isn't it? Hopefully, inshallah. All the best and well played. <laughs> so that was Chris Gale. Is back to the comms out there. Great entertainment from Chris Gale today alongside Dilshan Munawira. Munawira, the Sri Lankan, making his first appearance of this uh, Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League 2018. And uh, Darwish Rasuli as well. Look at that with uh, Mohammed Nabi adding 67 from just 27 deliveries. Wonderful entertainment that the bulk legends have provided. 23 sixes, 12 fours, and uh, well, they have set an absolute mountain for Kabul to climb in order to win this match. The target, 245 runs from 20 overs. The asking rate, a pretty uh, significant one, 12.25 runs to the over. We'll take a quick break now, and when we come back, we'll see how Kabul get on in their chase. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Sharjah Cricket Stadium after a remarkable first 20 overs of action with uh, Bulk making 244 for six. Dilshan Munawira and Chris Gale started off the fun and games. Remember, they scored only 10 from the first three overs, but then they went absolutely crazy. The ball went everywhere. 23 sixes in total. And uh, Charu Sharma alongside me. Charu uh, almost ran out of uh, superlatives, really, for the hitting that we saw. Yeah, Brian. I, you know, I'm. I remain disappointed. Chris Gale left 20 runs short of what should have been a brilliant, memorable hundred. That's how uh, Munawira got out, and then, of course, Gale continued, but got out in the most bizarre circumstance later on. We'll have to say, very, very unfortunate. Except for the Kabul's one-on point of view, they would have been delighted to see the back of him because just everything disappeared out of the boundary line. He did just one hand at times. And of course, uh, that gave so much confidence to the rest of the batsmen coming in. Rasuli did very well, and that signaled the end of the big man. So, the only really unfortunate part of the whole day. Uh, Rashid did get one back, but uh, I don't think he saw much reason to smile the rest of the innings. Yes, once Gale and Munawira were out, it was the Darwish Rasuli and uh, Mohammed Nabi show. They really did blaze the ball again. Rasuli, in his second appearance of this uh, Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League, played some wonderful shots for 50 in 27 balls. And Nabi, uh, uh, that was his departure. Yeah, Nabi's big hitting was very impressive as well, uh, Brian. Of course, they gave uh, a couple of wickets away in the end. Thanks for the bowler, of course, who had been taken for many. And then uh, Mirawais came in and struck a few big ones to take them to 244. Uh, 13 from only three, so that's some strike rate. But of course, very top heavy. And uh, for a change, we saw Chris Gale uh, doing what he does best. 80 from only 48. And uh, after such a sedate start, I think he was three in 14 or something like that. So we can say 80 from only about 30 or so. Uh, oh, well, no one wants to take this home except maybe Parnell, who also went for a few in his final over, but uh, you were saying then that he'd only given, what, 16, 17 in three, and then got taken by Mirwais for a couple of sixes. Uh, otherwise, very forgettable day for the bowlers, particularly for the no-ball man. Yeah, what a remarkable uh, day Farid Ahmed uh, had, because uh, he actually bowled a maiden, only the fourth maiden of this Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League, and then, he ended up bowling an over of four no balls. He lost his run up completely. A wide was in there as well. That over cost uh, 33. And then uh, Colin Ingram came on with his leg spin and he bowled an over which cost 32. Really, the bowling figures, uh, well, they were like some sort of horror show. If you take the first three, oh, this is a silly stat. If you take the first three overs away and uh, you take those, um, uh, the two overs where they gave so many runs away, uh, what I'm trying to say is that this score is is largely a 17 over score uh, or maybe even 16. So Mohammed Nabi, plenty to smile about. I wonder what they're talking about now. How do we defend this? Oh, it's going to be tough. <laughs> You'll go out and enjoy yourself. I think the one thing uh, Nabi did do, which I mentioned was very generous when he was talking to Alistair Campbell earlier on at the toss, is that despite the fact that captains at times uh, are, are uh, forced to keep that momentum going or encouraged to anyway, saying, well, don't stop a winning combination. There's so much in cricket we keep hearing about, you know, don't don't um, ruin a, or, or change a winning combination. He made four wholesale changes and some of them worked out really well for him so far. Now, Brian, this is not going to be overhaul, is it? Although, mind you, I'll say very quickly that the previous high was 218 by the Pakti Panthers in the opening match and, <laughs> and Kabul Zwanan actually got it. So they, they have batting, that's for sure. And this man particularly, wow, what an innings he played. Yeah, an awful lot depends on Hazratullah, you would reckon. And, uh, of course, Luke Ronke as well. These two have uh, got good form in terms of the partnerships they've shared. They uh, added 144 when uh, Hazratullah made the only 100 of the tournament so far. And uh, Ronke, of course, got a half century in uh, Kabul's last match match they lost to uh, Nangahar after making a really good start this period. I think they added 80 for the first wicket, but then they lost their way. So uh, these two know what they're doing, but it's going to be uh, an 
incredibly difficult job, isn't it, to uh, start off requiring 12.25 and over, and you have to go at that rate all 20 overs. It just sounds ridiculous, doesn't it, to, to get 245 to win. Of course, I'll point out once again the difference between chasing and setting a target when you are... 10 runs from three overs and you're batting first, you can still accelerate crazily because you're not really concerned about what total you get to. Uh, you, know, you get to 150, 180, 244 in this case. But when you're chasing, you're always so aware of the fact that you need to continue to go hard all the time. And if you're uh, 10 runs from three overs, then all is over. Mahmoud Nabi begins. As he almost always does. Absolutely. Luke Ronke, 50 in the last match from 31 balls in that game against uh, Nangaha. There's very little time for Kabul just to uh, take stock here. They have to go hell for leather right from the off. Yeah, well, Kabul cannot be telling themselves they got only 10 runs in the first three overs and we'll be okay if we get that. No, you won't. It's going to climb to 14-15. Such a clever length. I keep saying that about Muhammad Nabi. I'm tired of saying that. But he gives nothing away. He keeps dropping it on the... He was hit... Um in a couple of uh, instances yesterday down there when he drifted onto uh, the pads of uh, Gurbaz. Two overs for 29 yesterday. He was uncharacteristically expensive. Once again, drops it right where he should. Well, they only have 240 runs left after this. It's a ridiculous mountain to climb. But, you know, we have enough evidence of the big hitting here, of Hazratullah particularly. Ronki, you just mentioned, got a very quick 50. So, I do hope that Kabul make a, a fair bid at this and it get to maybe 200 or so and uh, just give them a scare, Bulk. Well, that was a scare between the wickets then. A little bit of a yes, no, excuse me between the two batsmen. All's well that ends well. Has Rotullas off the mark. It's six without loss. How much more can a captain get from his batting side? Mohammad Nabi should be delighted. And Brian, I must also mention that his big hitting abilities are also very special. Look at that shy. Uh, he would have been there. He's watching the ball rather well, Hazratullah, so I don't think there was any danger there. But uh, Nabi as well, he comes in a little late, and every once in a while when we chat with him, I say, hey, we missed your batting, because it's also electrifying. Just the calmness with which he hits the ball, and of course he hits it big. So also a very special bat, Mohammad Nabi. But... Uh, this is the show that we're waiting for, the Hazratullah Zazai show. And uh, who will have the last laugh? Will it be this man, Tarzan here? Will he get to flex his muscles? Or will Hazratullah deposit uh, many more of these balls outside the park here and cost the ACB a little more? Yeah, Gulbuddin Naib, he's going to be bowling uh, the second over. Joint leading wicket taker in the tournament. 11 wickets for him so far. Nabi, you're right about his big hitting. 37 today in just 15 balls. Wide. Well, Naib, I think, a little aware of Hazrat's abilities. He should also be aware uh, that his team's defending 245. So don't worry about it. Just go up there and bowl any way you like. It's going to be okay. Well, the joint uh, highest with Mujib, who, of course, uh, struck goal in that last match of his. Took four fabulous wickets. Udana has been priceless. And Shirzad also very quick. Oh, up. And uh, that may not carry all the way. Again, it had a fair amount of width, maybe too much. And Hazrat uh, couldn't quite find the middle of the bat, but that's another fog boundary. 
Yep, that was uh, somewhere near the bottom of the bat, actually, but he's such a strong man. And, of course, there's no cover out uh, in front of Square on the offside in these early stages of the innings, holding the pose for the photographers. And uh, a couple of bounces and a fog boundary. We also know what uh, Gulbadeen's trying to do because we know... Hazrat loves the leg. Hard, flat six. Wow. I was about to say Gulbadeen and the rest of them would be aware that you don't allow Hazrat to free his shoulders. And he just did. He loves it there. Still hasn't got a, a bat sponsor, but... Uh, the more this tournament goes on and the more he keeps playing like this, surely one's in the offing. Oh, that was uh, very strongly hit, wasn't it? Yeah, much better. Full. Hazrat just about getting his bat down in time. A little lucky. Scamper across for a single. Knowing how Simon Helmut goes about these things, the coach of the Bulk Legends, I'm pretty sure, you know, the message has gone out to the Bulk fielders that they should always be throwing at uh, Hazratullah's end. He's uh, a little bit lackadaisical at times in his running between the wickets. Uh, his counterpart in the other team, <laughs> Gail, not electrical, uh, electric running between the wickets, but um, he doesn't need to. And even Hazrat here can just take it easy with the runs. Don't have to take... Uh, unnecessary risks with either the singles or trying to turn them into two goes to the boundary he can hit the ball big we know 124 from just 55 for Hazrat as we were focusing on Gale slower ball okay Samid uh, sorry that's uh, Darwish Rasuli at uh, long on yeah, we've seen Gulbadin use that slower ball to good effect in the tournament so far yeah, he's a pretty decent bowler. In fact, they got so many Shirzad we were about to mention. Shirzad bowled so well, quick, and of course, with variety as well. That's what he's done so far. Four for 12. Fabulous. You remember that match a long, long time. And of course, one of our leading wicket takers here in the Gulbahar, Afghanistan Premier League, powered by Fogg. Against Paktia, two for 19, two for 10, Nangarhar. Good to see as well Ben Lochlin at mid on having a chat with him. Lachlan, the leading wicket-taker in the history of the Big Bash in Australia. Oh, in the arc. Didn't quite get to the pitch of that, but Hazrat is so strong. Are we going to get tired of saying that? But he's uh, truly a very, very strong individual. And uh, manages to delay that shot just enough. Again, bottom of the bat, but finds uh, the long gone boundary for another fog boundary. Well, there's a deep wide mid-wicket placed specifically for that shot but uh, still has Rotula managed to find uh, the gap in the field and straight behind the bowler off the low full toss another fog boundary very expensive by Gulbadi Naib this first over 21 runs off it and after two Kabul are 27 for no loss Second over for Mohamed Nabi from the Sharjah club end. Let's have a look at the last ball of that uh, previous over. Clubbed down the ground. Low full toss. And that'll be four more. Another fog boundary. Ronke getting in on the act. Yeah, flying dive to his left, Gulbadin after that over. But uh, maybe just a shade late. And I wonder if it was too close to the square leg umpire. And that threw Gulbadin off just a bit. There's the sweep, and uh, <laughs> the umpire doing well to get out of the way. And once again, we do have a deep square leg, so just a single. Those are uh, dangerous shots against Nabi, but Ronki has got away with it twice in a row. Okay, Samed, the leg spinner. Out on the mid-wicket boundary, we'll see him a little bit later on.
Oh, was there a little feather on that from Hazratullah? It's run fine. Wait for a signal. And there isn't one. So, uh, yeah, missed chance. Yeah, Hazrat seemed to hesitate just a bit. Should I go for the big one? Maybe not against Nabi. And then uh, it was just an edge. Didn't really move his feet too much. I'm going to have to say he got lucky there. It's a fairly healthy edge, so uh, Ikram Ali Kale didn't really have an opportunity to glove it. Another very good over by uh, the wily off-spinning skipper of uh, the bulk legends. And uh, it'll end well too. Three gone, 33 for no loss. Let's have another look at that uh, chance. I call it a chance, but it was such a healthy edge. You see, it barely um, touched the gloves of uh, Ikram Ali Kale. Just flicked his pad in the end. Yeah, I'm quite convinced that uh, Hazrat was trying to go big and then uh, stopped the shot midway. And that just turns the keeper off once in a while when you expect uh, the batsman to be going big and then all of a sudden just jabs his bat down. And I think the keeper had gotten up a bit, saying, oh, gosh, where's this going to disappear? Tough job keeping. Better you than me, bro. <laughs> there we go. In the arc. And that will go all the way again. That's uh, Hazratullah's go-to shot. Didn't again for me catch it 100%, but still the strength of that shot, taking it over the boundary line for a fog spagiza. Abdullah Mazari's first ball of the Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League. And he goes the journey. And again. And that's even further. Oh dear, welcome to the bowling crease. Well, finally, Hazrat hitting the middle of the bat, the sweet spot. And yes, Mazari, welcome to the Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League. That's what's going to happen. He's got a crabby kind of action, darted it in, but it was in the arc. And Hazratullah, well, he just said, I'm going to take hold of this by the scruff of the neck. Terrific shot. Down the leg side. Quite unusual there, actually. A wide signal. First two balls, he went to the side of the umpire. Now he's decided to go between the umpire and the stumps. Change of uh, angle in his approach. Six more. Oh, goodness me. Unbelievable hitting. They've all gone in roughly the same area. And uh, Mazari won't forget his uh, APL debut in a hurry. Well, so Kabul doing to Balk what Balk did to them. I think that just about stayed inside the stadium, so a ball saved. Now, 6-6, six, six, wide 6. Remember, Balk took 33 of one, 32 of another. We got uh, 19 now, two balls to go, three balls to go, beg your pardon. Of course, he now goes over the wicket. And should get the same treatment up in the air, this time on the offside, no cover there, over long off. Wow, Hazratullah Zazai, this is what we expected of you, thanks for delivering so far. They couldn't, could they? Two, 245 they're chasing, they made a flying start. Goodness me! You just wouldn't believe it, would you? Well, almost hit the cameraman high up on the deep mid wicket side, just to his left. Lucky that he's okay, but the ball's out of the park, so uh, the ball box will come on in. And Mohammad Nabi might be chewing that gum a little harder right now, saying, uh "Oh, hang on now, uh, are we going to be chased? 245? No, Hazratullah, 50, and only 12 deliveries." There has to be some kind of a major record here. 
Hazratullah Zazai, fabulous innings. While we were just admiring the sixes, he's gone to 50. Brian's going to check this for sure. Only 12 deliveries. And up again into the night sky. He's done it. Six sixes in the over. Welcome to T20 cricket. Mazari can only smile. Had been taken apart. This is history. And Hazratullah Zazai has joined a very select band. Oh, goodness me. I feel really privileged to have been here to see this. And that uh, almost cleared the uh, pavilion. And Mazari, well, that is what you call a severe hammering. Has to, has to be the fastest 50 anywhere. Oh, that's a very legitimate appeal. And it could even be a run-out chance there. Cheru has Ratullah's 50 from 12 balls. He joins Yuvraj Singh in the ICC World 2020 of 2007 and Chris Gale for the Melbourne Renegades against the Adelaide Strikers in 2016 as the joint fastest 50 in the history of 2020 cricket. What? Well, worthy of applause, what a special knock. And now let's not talk about chasing 245, but just independently applaud what Hazratullah Zaza has done right here in the Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League powered by Fog. And he goes big again. Doesn't quite find the middle of the bat, but they'll find another boundary. Fine leg was in. And uh, square leg. Where are the place fielders for this man? Nabi, are you a little worried? You should be. Thanks, Brian, for those figures. So, joint fastest 50 in T20s. We'll take it. It's happened right here, right in front of us, right now. Almost anti-climax there. The, <laughs> the single to Hazratullah. 62 from 16 balls. Four fours, seven sixes for him. Nabi's bored rather well in the middle of all of this. He's completing his third over now, one ball left, and given only 17. Five overs gone. Remarkable. It's 77 without loss. What a start here for the Kabul side. Absolutely unbelievable. 62 of just 16 for Hazratullah. Just see the six sixes. Uh, the first one clobbered on the onside. Some brilliant hitting. Great striking. Exactly what he was doing in the zone for him, in the slot for him. Going after the left arm spinner with a lot of ease. Absolutely fantastic. Saw that 100 from him the other day, and that exactly he's uh, going about out here as well. And what a feat he's achieved. Never easy. Absolutely brilliant. Seven sixes so far, along with four fours. 16 deliveries. Uh, he's got to his uh, half century. And with me in the com box uh, for the first time today is uh, Alistair Campbell. Welcome, Alistair. Well, they'll get through for two. Hello, AJ. Hello, everybody. Yeah, this is uh, something to behold. It really is. Outstanding hitting from Hazratullah and Luke Ronke, as he was in the previous innings. Just. Uh, a mere onlook at 14 or 15 balls where his partner is 62 of 16. Outrageous. Nice pass the outside edge. <laughs> Just looks like a different wicket when Luke Ronke's on strike. Oh, 
we've got a game on here big time. I just thought when I was down there that it was a good wicket. I didn't think it would be this good. Bowler's graveyard here tonight in Sharjah. And uh, the batsmen are filling their boots. That's down the ground. That'll be another Spagiza. Well, he's in the act now too, Luke Ronke. He was in the slot from Ben Lachlan. And he's uh, plonked it over middle for six. Absolutely fantastic. Straight down the ground, exactly what he was doing. Full face of the bat, big stride forward. And there she goes. Fog maximum once again. Really, it's been a very bright start here. Almost like what uh, the bulk legends did. And uh, really, this uh, runches is on. This game is on. Thought that it's going to be a big score. Not able, uh, going to be really difficult for the Kabul side. Well, it's been absolutely uh, the start they wanted, just what the doctor ordered for them. You can watch all the uh, ball by ball action as well. Click in if, uh, dot com. log on to it, and uh, you can watch every action of the Gulbahar uh, Afghanistan Premier League. Oh, is this going to be out? It is. Gulbadi Naib makes no mistake, and Hazratullah Zazai. His innings comes to an end. He's really peppered the boundary, but on this occasion, not able to get the length, not able to get the elevation, and pays the price. Yeah, once again, going for the big one. This time, uh, not timing it too well. The bat also just turning in his hand. Finding the fielder in the deep. Gulbadi Naib, a very good fielder. Good athletic catch by him. And a very fine innings. Comes to an end. 62 of just 17 for Zazai. Really played well. 86 for one. So Javed Ahmadi, he walks, walks in, hunt two runs for him in the uh, APL uh, this season, the inaugural season, his best 39, hasn't got a big score. 131, his uh, strike rate, uh, can't really tonk the ball, but really hasn't uh, got that big innings under his belt so far. Last ball of the power play, straight to the fielder, dot delivery, six overs gone, it's 86 for one. Marwais Ashraf into the attack. He finished the innings uh, really well with bat in hand, two lusty blows. But now he's got a bowl on the, the very pitch that he thought was quite nice to bat on. And it's going to be a test, it really is. He's got to be spot on. You've got to make sure all your variations are working, knowing full well that this is a batting paradise. Good start. He is bowling to the new batsman, so uh, that'll make a, a bit of a difference. If he had come on when Hazratullah was still in, then it might have been a different scenario. This was the end of uh, Hazratullah, just not able to get it out the center of the bat, not able to get it out the middle. And Gulbuddin Naib takes a good running catch. They needed that. They needed to get back in the contest, but he's played another good hand. Brilliant innings. Yeah, really, he was disappointed the way he got out because uh, he was looking so good, getting those six sixes under his belt. Uh, you mentioned about Hazratullah Zai, really a special player. He's got the gift uh, of timing, the way he can really uh, go after the bowling, make a mockery of the bowling. Got a brilliant 100 earlier in the tournament. 
At this stage, uh, Bulk Legends was 75 for no loss. So Kabul just lost one extra wicket. They are ahead as far as it runs are concerned. Nicely played. Very nicely played by Sikhni that gap. That's going to be a fog four. Yep, there's nobody in that area. Fine leg up in the circle. Your square leg is pretty square. And uh, Lou Gronke, he missed out uh, earlier on. Not on this occasion. This time, some more bet on it. And he knew straight away. Once he had helped it round the corner, timed it well enough, raced away for four. A yeah, nice swivel. Knew exactly what he was doing. Just on the pad line, Ashraf. Won't be very happy with that. Right in the block hole now. Uh, putting a single, uh, the non-strike or Ahmadi. Ronki was never interested in one. The target, although a massive one, really uh, they haven't cashed the uh, power play the first six overs. Exactly what Kabul required early on. He's a very canny bowler, Ashraf. He can uh, mix his space, use his cutters, he's bowled well so far. That's right, straight to the fielder. So not able to cash in on that occasion, Luke Ronke. Just hitting a two square. And if you're going at uh, less than 10 to the over as a bowler on the surface, you've done a pretty good job. 244 for six the bulk legends got. So you've got to just make sure as a bowler you're not conceding too many boundaries and trying to just get them to hit it to, uh, to the fielders. Not only in the circle, but on the boundary as well. That's a really good opening over. Just the six from it. 92 for one. So seven of us gone, 92 for one. Luke Ronke, uh, he's uh, taking his time, 26 or 22. Uh, Hazratullah, what a fine effort. 62 of just 17 uh, deliveries for him. Ahmadi new to the crease. Ingram, uh, Zaman, uh, Laurie Evans, he's been in great form so far. So they have uh, the batting depth. Good delivery. But yes, you can also uh, create your own uh, fantasy side, test your skills, win big real cash. And you can log on to myteam11.com. Surely a man like Hazratullah, the talent he's got, he'll be in uh, my team. What a talent he is, uh, Alistair. He certainly is in this form of the game. He's a big unit and uh, hits it miles. Well, using his feet, Luke Ronke, and uh, a little bit of outswing from Gulbuddin Naib. Just a hint of movement in the air, and it gets past the outside edge. Yeah, just a movement, and that was enough. A uh, bit of lateral movement. Scramble seam, although, but uh, coming down the track there. Trying that big, uh, expansive drive on the offside, missing it completely. These are going to be important overs. Uh, the field can be spread after the power play. So more protection in the deep. That's in the air, just falling short of the fielder. I think if I'm a seamer, I'm trying to bowl as many Yorkers as possible because then you're taking out the pitch, and that's uh, the flat surface. Anything that you were relying on to bounce on this pitch first, uh, we know it's coming on very nicely, and we know that it's good for batting. So if uh, you're a seamer, you just want to be trying to bowl in Yorkers. Pretend that uh, you're bowling at the death. And just get up there full straight. And uh, if you want to mix it up, then maybe the odd slow ball, but think nothing else. There we go. There's a slow ball. Well bowled. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, if that had been a direct hit, he was gone. He didn't even try and slide the bat. He jumped up in the air, Luke Ronke. And uh, it's okay now that uh, there wasn't a direct. He's still there. I'll tell you what, this will be very interesting. I think he was out. Yeah, you're right, I think. Uh, just seeing his reaction as well. Oh, he was struggling. Would have been a goner. Just required a direct hit. Makes a big difference.
Yeah, there's a length ball. You don't want to be bowling there. It evades the fielder in mid off and goes away to the boundary for four. Valiant effort from Ben Lachlan. But length balls, you're inviting the batsman to play a big shot and invariably on a surface like this, the batsman wins. Intent was very good. Straight over the bowler's head, knew exactly what he was doing. Tried his best in the end, but in a way, that ball was really hit. Well timed. Another four for uh, Luke Ronke. That's the fourth uh, boundary for him. He's already hit a six as well. He's trying to up, up the ante now. Oh, that's uh, brilliant. In the gap. Going to be back-to-back -back boundaries to win the over. Eight gone. It's uh, the 100 up as well, 102 for one. Both the 50s coming in uh, quick fashion. The first one, 21, when Hazratullah was out there. Then uh, 27, the second one. So they're doing well. Last ball, uh, previous over. Once again, a very good uh, boundary. Just bowling lane deliveries, and he was up to it. Just waiting for that. He's rightly mentioned, Alistair. They've got to be bowling uh, block all deliveries right out there. The Yorkers. Once again, the length stuff. Not timing it too well this time. Yeah, you're asking for trouble as far as I'm concerned as a, a seamer if you're bowling uh, length balls on the surface. You've got to treat it as though you're bowling in the last over. Just get your head right, get it uh, on there and just say, right, this is uh, what the situation is and just pretend uh, that's uh, what you have to do because uh, any length balls, wow, they're disappearing. That's better. That's up in the block hole. Baspin can't get underneath it. And make him hit it to your sweepers. And that's exactly what should be going through Marwes Ashraf's head. And obviously, Gulbuddin Naib, we saw in the last over, he could slow ball. He bowled a couple in the block hole, missed out, bowl length on a couple of deliveries, and went for a couple of boundaries. That's played well. He's finding those gaps up. Oh, colliding into each other. That could be painful. Just hope he's okay out there. Gee whiz, I tell you what, that uh, was a fearful blow between the two advancing fielders. One of them's fine, the other's not so fine. That's not what you want to see on a cricket field. They were both hurtling after the ball, trying to make the save, and just couldn't bail out in the end. It was perfectly in the gap by Javad Amadi. And have a look at this. They both got their eyes on the ball. And then look up at the last minute, Muhammad Nabi. There's the shoulder goes into the jaw. That's the problem. Muhammad Nabi's up. He's fine. But uh, it's uh, Usman Ghani. He's the guy that's taken a bit of uh, a blow here. He gets the elbow into the jaw. So I think he's the one that's in trouble. Muhammad Nabi will uh, feel a bit uh, lightheaded, but he'll get up. He'll be fine, but not this bloke. And you don't want to see this. This is uh, not good at all. He's in trouble. Yeah, you're right. I think uh, really is uh, feeling the pain. Just hope that he recovers uh, at the earliest. Really sad to see uh, colliding into each other. You're right, that elbow hitting up. Oh, and he uh, went down after that. Mohammad Nabi uh, just rolling over the skirting. But uh, Usman Ghani, I tell you what, he's in pain. Yeah, and he's a big unit as well, Mohammad Nabi. So uh, let's just hope uh, that uh, everything's okay. The physios and we're out there quickly, but I just think they need more than the physio. They need some uh, medical attention. And uh, there is an ambulance that hangs out the back there. There are medical staff. I think that's what's needed on the field. They need to get that out there and get a stretcher there and get this bloke uh, in some uh, prime medical care. Well, here we go. There we, there we have it. And uh, Ben Lachlan providing some assistance as well, carrying on the stretcher. And uh, there's another one uh, coming on as well. So finally, we've got some medical assistance because that's what's required, my word. In any other sports, rugby I'm talking about, in the contact sports, this is what's expected, but not on a cricket field, and you don't like to see it.
We are really sad to see, really sad. Colliding into each other, really is in pain. Uh, can't really leave the field, so the stretcher being uh, called for. The last thing you want to see on the cricket field. Well, a good sign is that he's sitting up. So, uh, that uh, for me is, uh, makes things a little bit easier for you. He was still lying prone on the ground and wasn't moving then. Uh, you would think there was a bit of trouble, but I think that uh, he's been forced into the upright position and he's uh, slowly, as the seconds tick by, just gaining a bit of consciousness and uh, a few of the faculties as well. <coughs> Such a good game of cricket as well. I mean, the ball is disappearing everywhere. This is just another look at it in the gap perfectly. You can't blame. Both fielders are looking at uh, the ball and then suddenly look up and, oh, Muhammad Nabi, he's the bigger unit. He puts the hands up first. And uh, the shoulder-elbow area just connects with the jaw of Usman Ghani. So uh, I'm glad that uh, it looks okay. I think you'll have a bit of a headache. Make no mistake. But uh, precautionary measures being taken, and quite rightly so. And he'll uh, just go for some checkups, go for a scan maybe, just make sure that everything's A-OK. -okay. No, you're right. I think always uh, better take the precaution and uh, just got up uh, a bit as well. So uh, hopefully uh, he'll recover pretty quickly. But at the moment, uh, getting the attention and much needed attention there for Usman Ghani. Phil Simmons, uh, the national team coach of uh, the Afghanistan uh, cricket side, that has done so well recently, just having a close look exactly what's uh, transpiring. But really, the saddest thing you want to see. A cricket field, any injury. Right, so while they uh, deal with uh, Usman Ghani, have a look at this earlier on. This was Hasratullah. He's with the six sixes. This is when history was made here in Sharjah. Some of the cleanest hitting you will ever see. I'll tell you what, this bloke has got an eye for a ball. And uh, they didn't just clear the boundary, they went a long way over the boundary. Huge, massive blows, no bigger than this one. That went straight down the ground and straight onto the roof. Excellent innings from Hazratullah. They could have done uh, with a bit more of him, to be honest, Kabul's one on. But 62 of 17 balls, seven sixes and four fours. Outstanding stuff from the young man. It's not for the first time in the tournament as well. Who could forget his 124 the other night and he's followed that up with a quick fire 62 here today yeah this is the fastest 50 as well up uh, so far in the uh, gulbahar afghanistan premier league from azratullah zazai he's been amongst the runs he's uh, really, really looked good to see uh, the fastest so far coming off just 12 deliveries for him uh, today versus uh, the bulk legends before this rashid khan 23 has got have gone 25 deliveries for him uh, Anton Devsic, he's been in good form as well. But he's been special, no doubt about that. <laughs> Crazy. 12 deliveries. And the next best was 23. 271 runs for the same gentleman. And uh, the next best, Devsic on uh, 239. And then Laurie Evans, who's uh, been really good in the tournament thus far. You can't help but think that he'll have a bat tonight and have a chance to add to that total of runs ryan tenderscarta as well from the bulk legends 204 not playing today given a rest but he's been outstanding in the tournament as well, well this is what happened in the first innings uh, it was a brilliant start here for the bulk legends uh, for the openers doing a very good job laying a very good part foundation 86 runs a uh, few no balls as well from farid malik and that really uh, Set the tone for Chris Gale. Opened up, played some uh, brilliant shots along with Dilshan. And then against Rashid Khan, this was uh, really special. The left and right combination was uh, really going strong. And one of the reasons that Bulk managed that massive score of 248. 244, beg your pardon. Some uh, lovely striking there. Misfields also happening in between. But overall, uh, some uh, brilliant batting. Chris Gale. Uh, was really struggling before this one as far as the form was concerned that this was a wicket but he continued uh, the merry ways there was only one uh, way to go about Chris Gale getting to his uh, half century as well and uh, whenever the opportunity was there in his zone was really looking uh, brilliant 
taking toll on anything loose to him was uh, really absolutely brilliant. Yeah, and they just carried on, carried on. That was the unfortunate dismissal of Chris Gale. They had a couple of overs hey. where uh, things went a little awry. Rashid Khan knocking over Malcolm Waller on that occasion. But Rasuli and Mohammed Nabi, I'll tell you what, they played really well towards the back end. And anything that was served up, they deposited it over the boundary and through the boundary. Mohammed Nabi was particularly strong. Anything uh, that he was able to latch onto went a long way. And then he was uh, out LBW, good Yorker from Farid Malik. Gulbuddin now perished the very next ball, trying to get on with things. But Mirwais Ashraf, he had a field day at the end. That was a massive blow to end the inning. Smiles all around, but uh, smiles uh, not uh, at this particular juncture here at the stadium because Usman Ghani has uh, suffered a terrific blow to the head in a collision with Mohammed Nabi. But thankfully, the medical staff have intervened and he's uh, on a stretcher and uh, looks like he might be okay. The, the footage we saw earlier was that at least he was sitting up and uh, seemed to be okay, but as I said, he'll get to the hospital now and make sure he's uh, having all the checks and scans just to make sure that everything's okay. And let's hope that everything is okay. Yeah, we saw there uh, Mohamed Shazad as well. Well, uh, he's the captain of the Park Theatre Panthers. Uh, along with the, the stretcher just walking himself, Mohamed Shazad. Everybody really praying that uh, he should be okay. Really nothing major. Really a sad incident. That collision between uh, Mohamed Nabi and Osman Ghani. It's the last thing you want on a cricket field. Bhaktia Panthers, of course, uh, literally playing the last game. Not in a very happy frame of mind there, Osman Ghani. Really uh, very sad. Yeah, you don't want to see this because it's just taken the, the edge off uh, what is a really, really good game of cricket. And uh, I'm sure we'll still uh, see a very good game of cricket, but uh, we just don't like to see that sort of stuff. Now then, they're just uh, trying to uh, understand where they're going to get this ambulance. Is it going to come onto the field? Where's the entrance? And I'm sure that's at the players' area. That's where they're at, and they can come around and pick them up and whisk them off to uh, a hospital where I'm sure they'll receive them and uh, get done what needs to be done. Right, so we're uh, back to the action, and it's Mirway Sashraf. Three overs, uh, or three balls bowled in this over. He's gone for six, and uh, we can get underway after a bit of a hiatus to uh, deal with the horrific collision to Usman Ghani. And uh, I thought some prayers are with him and hope that uh, everything is okay after he gets the scans and he can just have a headache and be back here uh, in the future games in the tournament and play his part. Oh, straight away, straight away. He's bowled a full toss, and it's been hit straight to Case Ahmed, would you believe it? The softest of dismissals. It's Javed Amadi, and after the long break, he's uh, obviously had a long time to think about things. Been a 10 or 15 minute break, and he's got a juicy full toss and hit it straight to Case Ahmed. Yeah, absolutely. I think, as you mentioned, a soft dismissal, bringing to the hands of uh, Case at the uh, cover region. Could have really dispatched it anywhere, but Marves uh, getting a wicket here. They got to pick, pick up a few wickets to put that pressure. And they out for seven. It's 108 for two. In at number four comes Laurie Evans, the standout batsman for the Cobbles. One on, batted four in the first game, got 79 not out in that uh, mammoth run chase, and a five for the rest of the tournament. So uh, back into a position that uh, he's uh, got some fond memories of and scored uh, that 79. That was in pursuit of 219, and that was uh, early on in the tournament against the Paktia Panthers. 
And he has uh, come in with the similar sort of effort required, really, chasing 244. Well, good over from uh, Ashraf, getting a wicket as well. Nine overs gone up, it's 108 for two. Luke Ronke still there, 36 off 28. Chavan Amadi, well, he's just been uh, dismissed, hitting a full toss straight to extra cover. And uh, now it's up to Laurie Evans to try and build a partnership and find the boundary a few times. Still uh, a bit of batting to come for the Cardinals. One on Colin Ingram. He hasn't had the best of tournaments, just 18 runs in his four innings thus far. Rashid Khan, we know that uh, he can hit a long ball. Shahidullah as well. So there's plenty to come, but they've got to go at a fair clip. 12.45, so now on 12 and a half to the over required from here on in. Right, so Case Ahmed now. He's bull well uh, so far in the Afghanistan Premier League. Case yes, was young lad, a lot of talent, and uh, this was the wicket for Ashraf. Full toss, really juicy full toss, but finding his fielder. Case yes, Ahmed uh, taking up, uh, accepting that catch gleefully. After a break up, at times it's just a lapse of concentration. But this man was special, Hazratullah. Six sixes today. What a knock from him. Really uh, is a treat to watch when he's on song, when he gets going. Absolutely fantastic. Saw that uh, innings from Chris Gale, the other left hand at the southpaw in the afternoon. And you did mention, uh, Lester, about the surface, uh, the binding. Looked a different wicket uh, from yesterday. The low scoring games uh, yesterday, but today it's uh, absolutely different. Yeah, you just uh, get that feeling when you go out there and you've seen wickets all around the world. When I just saw this one today, I just thought this is a belter. This is an absolute beauty. And it's proved so. As mentioned, I didn't think it'd be this good. But. Uh, Yes, it has been good, but also you have to say the bowling from both sides hasn't been uh, up to scratch. There's uh, been a lot of loose deliveries and uh, I think also the wrong length being bowled by the seamers in particular and the little experiments as well. Rashid Khan giving Colin Ingram the ball and saying, have a go. Well, that went for 32 that over. So I just think uh, that uh, the bowling's have been, or the bowling's been a bit indifferent as well. Yeah, but the quality of batting has been absolutely uh, fantastic. Ten of us gone. It's Nelson for two. Carble Worm for a fair amount of its journey so far ahead of that of the Bulk Legends. But uh, bear in mind that Bulk really did accelerate to a crazy degree in the second half of their innings. And that's a wonderful shot from Luke Ronke. Using his feet, freeing his arms, clobbering it through extra cover. Mervez Ashraf getting some treatment there. And Ronke under 42. Good evening to Cherry Sharma. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, Mirai has bowled particularly well to the stage. I think he gave a boundary off in his first over, going uh, down leg. But Ronke has been there for a long, long time. And uh, even though he's been relatively sedate, what's he striking at now? Uh, 123. That boundary will certainly help. And uh, for a change, uh, recognizing Mirai's, uh, shall we say, a very average medium pace, pace, the keeper's up. So that's new. And also the fact that uh, Ronke had been giving him the charge. So that's a good move by uh, the bulk legends. Yes, Ikram Ali Kale 
moving up to the stumps, complete with helmet. Oh, just to the right, a short third. Nothing going well for the man who gave six sixes away, including a wide uh, and wide as well. So uh, I feel a little sorry for him. Yes, Mazari diving over that one, and Mervais wasn't very impressed. <laughs> uh, care to uh, translate that, Brian? I think it went something along the lines of bad luck. <laughs> but I love you anyway. Uh, Mervais uh, just a little more expensive in this over so far, but he's a very clever bowler. Doesn't allow too much pace, for instance, for the batsman to utilize. And while the keeper was up now, of course, he's gone back. Just a quick mention that when I uh, did ask Mohammed Nabi some time back that who would you like to single out as one of the youngsters to watch out for, he did mention the keeper's name, Kramali. Oh, just to the right, the diving keeper. Not much going right for him as well, but uh, it's rather unfortunate. So one ball still to go and uh, 13 off it. Well, they're over halfway towards their target, uh, Kabul. Just over halfway through the innings, so they're by no means out of contention here. And with Laurie Evans at the crease, they will remain in contention, you would imagine. We'll have to be generous to Laurie Evans. He's just come in and uh, faced four deliveries yet. Oh, low full toss. Unable to take toll. Watch out for that run out. That's the last thing Kabul need. But you're right, as long as Laurie is there, plenty of hope. And uh, 11 overs gone now, it's 124 for two. Bolt! Ronke goes. Case Ahmed skids one through him. It ricocheted off the pads to disturb Ronke's off stump. And the young leg spinner strikes. Well, that's a real shame from uh, the Kabul chase perspective. Ronke was finally cutting loose after that Hazrat Zazai show. And uh, he just was never confident against uh, Case. Played half cock and paid the penalty. Didn't go forward, didn't stay back, just stayed right there. And uh, it snuck through. A clever ball by Case and uh, not such a clever uh, defense by uh, Luke Ronke. He really wasn't looking to hit that anywhere, just to tap it down. 47 though, and it's 124 for three. Shahidullah in at number five for Kabul. So a left and right hand combination now. And Hamid Hassan is down uh, pitch side. Yeah, well, he's still hanging on because uh, there's so much going on. But. Uh, We'll get to Hamid in a second, so a quick single stolen here. But this is a real setback now for Kabul's one on because, Brian, I'd love to make the point again about the difficulty of a chase. And uh, a lot of cricket fans may not be able to appreciate the fact that when you have to keep going hard all the time, it's just not usually possible, which is why 200 is chased once in 100 matches and 245, I, I dare suggest, once in 500 matches. Yeah, well, the issue is, of course, I guess, that um, 
Of course, uh, the last 10 overs of an innings don't include a power play. True. That certainly adds to uh, the problems. But Kaisa Madhya has bowled really well. I think he gave only three runs away in his first over. And now only two and has a wicket. So another special over. The wrong one. This might earn them two if they wish to run quickly enough. Yes, they do. However, what a terrific start provided to Kabul by Hazrat Zazai. Uh, what a shame that he uh, left when he did. And now, of course, respite for bulk. Goes big straight behind the bowler. Got plenty of bat on it. And so if Evans uh, is not going to do it right now, Shahidullah will. It's 132 for three after 12. Still another 113 required in eight overs. And it is time now to uh, go down to Hamid Hassan. I think he's got a special guest with him. With Hazrat Zazay, the fastest and the quickest, he got a 50. Hazrat, very well played. Dirkha batting. Padolas Balobani, 50. Aushpak Balashpak Chake. So, where did you feel in Zbarake? Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Uh, feeling a sas for Zenesta Sanisha Milkans from the Sari Hushali Kana, or by the Mitcham Yosada Poribole, Ranabat Kabutim, by Parana Kolokodam, the Allah Shukur Guzari, Ranzrala, Shpaguchak, Kurikaram, Jolko, Testarin, fifty Rikaram, Jolko Nalam, Shukur Guzari. Dear Hagari Suburzam, Shpak Balashpak Chaki Wali, Urajam, Ostanum Pareka Sanu Kerare, no Tunef Teharka Padevani Chara Shantis Tarano Sara di Numrare. The Tehar Zed as a parsare, Kushishki, your Ricard Jurki, no Kirkard, the Ricard, the Parari, Lopari, Chirazino, Azante, or Target, Taki, Ricard Jurki. Uzmam Kushishamdao has some doubt or so, Ricard Polpunum, come never Ricard Jurkum, Narashukra, Alhamdulla, the Meskimijurka. Paspa Chris Gilvan, a dear Haber Kiri, who Kalachita, Kishurok, Chris Gil, the Halcon Air Show. Yo do Portani than a Nori Larama, do so pins the Salvik runs at Osta Target. Safikar Kawi, Dah runs but as a chess key, the Kawikar Kodera Hakari. Wicket Alberta betting the Hawikata, no Sanga Chismung Bersmeran, Ravandi Wicket Stadio Bersmeran, Leruno, Kirkata, Hirgi Patalegi, Shaki. Oh, your Portanabella, Dinapas, Dwem round almost Shruki. Stasso, soon excitement, the bell round, or Sanga finish goal water for the tournament Kizak of Suna Chalakui, Stasso, or the Bulk team Chede, favorite key. No Faker Kawichi, Tasso favorite as take a do. Albata, Rom Tamashan Chanzel, Rom Minaval, Mungim Loro, Homung Polkushka, Rom Polkushki, Guru, which Kushesko, which is in final Lugot on the final Kuya Guru, inshallah. The Hachans, the Para, and all the best. Hazrat Zazay, he among the legends like Ivraj, six ball six sixes, and Gary Sobers. And he looking forward to win the game like 245 is not an easy run. But they have plenty of batting, and uh, the only thing is to stick in the crease and win the game for the team. Back to commentary box. Thanks very much, Hamid, and thanks to the history man down there, Hazratullah Zazai. 50 and 12 balls, joining Yuvraj Singh and Chris Gale as the joint record holders of the fastest 50 in this form of the game. Ben Lachlan not really impressed with that boundary to Shahidullah. Seven off the over, 13 gone, 139 for three.
Case Ahmed, who's bowled very impressively so far. All things considered, he's bowled extremely well. And, uh, I'm not suggesting he's a mystery bowler, but it's a little difficult to read. And uh, one for 12, all things, you know, considering what's happened in the match so far, exceptional. Not so sure Laurie Evans uh, might have the measure room, but Shahidullah may, as he did last over. Yes, he settled into the tournament quite nicely, Case Ahmed. I just got the impression early on it was all a bit of a novelty for him. Uh, smiling a lot whenever the camera was on him. He's not smiling now, though, because he's gone for six. Well, I did suspect that Shahidullah would be far more familiar and uh, less afraid of his reputation or his ability. He goes for another maximum. We've had plenty in this tournament, 248. I think the 250th will be memorable. It may come in this match. Was the wrong one, I think, but uh, it didn't matter. He got to the pitch of the ball. It was full. And we have another fog, Pagiza. So There's been a quiet spell for the last few deliveries. Finally, the ground coming alight again here at the Sharjah Cricket Stadium, thanks to Shahidullah. There's two 48 sixes in the tournament so far, and 32 of them alone have been in this single match. Quite astonishing. 23 in the first innings and nine already in this one. Yeah, well, as uh, Hazrat played, it was quite the Chris Gale show in the first innings. Just stood there and hammered it to all parts. Oh, wrong and again. Maybe that's doing too much. And Evans might get away. As a matter of fact. You've called it right, Charu. I'm not sure Laurie Evans is picking Case Ahmed here. It's a good over, just uh, eight runs from it, 147 for three. It's a brave chase, this, by Kabul's Wanan, but uh, they now require 98 from six overs, so uh, the asking rate has uh, jumped up to 16.33 runs per over. Well, we've seen terrific action in the uh, Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League so far, but this match is unforgettable. A special one. <coughs> and that goes over the point boundary for a six. <coughs> so the 150 comes up, Shahidullah has decided that we will try and make a, a real go at this 245. Well, it was a, a full toss dipping away. I wonder, there was no claim by the batsman saying, well, it was over waist height. He's happy with the six. Don't see that very often. And that one's over extra cover. Another fog boundary. This is terrific stuff from Shahadullah, 29 off 12 balls. And Gulbadeen, the joint leading wicket taker in the tournament with 11 scalps, two overs and two balls for 41. Well, he's just joining the band of bowlers who've been uh, taken apart today. This, of course, you can't even blame on the pitch. He just got to uh, that low full toss, hammered it over, extra cover. And uh, no cover, really. Caught the sweet spot of, spot of the bat. Could be another boundary, big uh, run coming in. Yeah, well done. <coughs> big Ben Lachlan out there on the point boundary, does really well. Gulbadeen just uh, changing his angle of delivery, coming over the wicket, and Lachlan throwing himself full length to his right to stop that one. Well, Kais Ahmed is keeping very tight from one end. Gulbadeen now leaking a few more from uh, the opposite end. Long off would make sure that's only a single. Darwish Rasuli on the boundary. He got a nice 50 today. 
And once again, let's just remind uh, everybody watching. One, thanks for joining us. And two, of course, Mohamed Nabi one, winning the toss, electing to bat first and having, what, making four changes in the team. And so far, it's worked out very well for him, but I'm sure he's still a little worried because there is plenty of batting for Kabul. Singles won't cut it for Kabul at this stage. It's been a very good over for them, 14 from it. But remember, they started off this over needing 16.33. Yeah, well, just to indicate the impossibility of the situation or the extreme difficulty, 16 runs every over for another five overs just doesn't look plausible. To short fine, <laughs> and Masari can once again not field it with any kind of uh, confidence there. So what a bad day for him. 15 gone, 162 for three. Just a tiny hope still left for Kabul. Five overs remaining, 162 for three. They're going to have to go some, but it's not beyond the realms of possibility from what we've seen here today. We just need to find uh, a spree of boundaries and suddenly they'll be back in things. Case Armour, three overs, one for 19 so far, has been terrific. Now he just needs to finish it up, knowing full well that they're going to be after him. There's a call of two straight away. And they're going to come back and should get there easily. Well placed. He got the pace on the ball exactly right. Knew that uh, Munawira was on the boundary edge. And straight away, as he hit it, he called for two and made it comfortably in the end. 35 of 16 deliveries for Shahidullah. Been an outstanding inning so far. Goes again. And it just clears the man. It's short third man. It'll have uh, enough on it to go to the boundary as well. Not in control. It was the googly, I think, from Case Ahmed. But he swung at it hard enough to get it just over the man and away for a much-needed boundary. It's a beautiful shot, Shahidullah. Just big age, and Mazari just only can watch. That's such a nightmare for him. Went for six ball six, sixes. Looking for two. That's only one. The game, oh, Maestro. The game is just turning, like 27 balls left, 76. The good thing is for Kabul's one on, wicket in hands. And this man, Lori Evans, if he's in the, in the crease, there is a possibility for Kabul's one on to win the game. Hasn't been at his fluent best today. Lori Evans, 10 of 13. Can he open the shoulders now and find the boundary? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll tell you what, he's uh, been left stranded. He wanted the single, Shahidullah was moving nowhere. Rooted to the crease, and Laurie Evans, no chance to turn and get back. They've thrown one away here, have the Kabuls one on. They needed these two to get going, but it's not going to happen. You have to think that uh, probably wasn't a single there, straight to the field, it bounced up nicely for him. Good return to the keeper. And that's a soft wicket, but one they'll take, no doubt. So Laurie Evans has to begin the long trek back to the pavilion. 10 or 14, 169 for four. Well, we're uh, very interested spectators, those uh, in the VIP area. And uh, let's hope uh, that this goes down to the wire. Colin Ingram, the new man to the crease. And hasn't had a very good tournament thus far. Can he pull something out of the fire here? He was treated 
harshly by Chris Gale in the one over he bowled when they fielded, went for 32. Now he's got to come out and try and find the boundary from the get-go. Round the wicket, Case Harmad will come to the left-handed Ingram. And there's no time to really play himself in. He's got to try and uh, either get Shahidullah on strike or find the boundary. Oh, straight away, he's sweeping. And uh, Chris Gale just comes around, palms it down. So a single will get uh, the in batsman, Shahidullah on strike. But a decent over this in the context of things. Just the eight conceded, a wicket as well. So uh, the run rate has escalated to 18 to the over. Started off at 16 and a bit, and already at 18. Oh, down the wicket, swing and a miss. Really good over that from young Case Ahmed. Four overs remaining, 170 for four. This is what's coming up, the Nangaha Leopards against the Paktia Panthers. It'll be match 15 in this Gulbaha Afghanistan Premier League. And it'll be live from the same venue, Sharjah, at 8 o'clock. But there's the small matter of uh, concluding this thriller here, 170 for four. And you would think, uh, having not looked what the opposition got, that uh, this would be a handy chase, but they're chasing 244. The captain, Mohamed Nabi, into the attack. This will be a crucial over, a swing over, if he can keep it down to 10, 12 to the over, that run rate will escalate to 22, 23, and then you'll have to think it's a bridge too far. But if they can manage to swing away a few boundaries here, they'll keep themselves in it. Yeah, just not able to find the timing. Saw him coming, he just just so late, Mohammed Nabi. Because of his action, he's able to uh, really watch the batsman and release it and adjust as late as possible. Such a skill to have. None for 19 thus far. And uh, into his uh, fourth over, so that's a terrific return in the context of this game. That's short, pulled away. And he's got him straight to Ben Laughlin out on the boundary. He's got away with one there, Mohammed Nabi. He knows it. It was a rank long hop and should have been dealt better with. But Shahidullah, all he can do is shake his head. He knows he's missed out there. He's played a good hand, though. He really did try to up the ante and get the run rate moving. But in the end, going for the boundary, not able to find it. And he knew straight away it hit it straight to Ben Lachlan. Doesn't have to move. And uh, takes uh, the simplest of outfield catches. He's not going to drop those. And he knows he's got away with one. The wry smile, but he'll take it. So uh, Shahid Ulligan for 40 of just 20 deliveries. 171 for five. Rashid Khan to the crease. And he's pretty handy with uh, Willow in hand. He's got the second fastest 50 in the tournament thus far of 23 deliveries. He's got so uh, some of that uh, same form here in this particular inning. 73 of just 20 deliveries. So we're getting near to where it'll be uh, a boundary required a ball. Still not able to find the boundary. Malcolm Waller keeps it down to one. This over has just gone for three, including a wicket. What an over. Expect nothing less from this talismatic Afghanistan player, Mohammed Nabi. But on the last delivery, has he got enough on it? Yeah, he has. Rashid Khan keeps their slim chances alive. Three overs remaining, 179 for five.
four overs, one for 27 for Muhammad Nabi and Case Ahmed finished with exactly the same figures as well. Muhammad Nabi going for a maximum of uh, the last delivery. Sport the figures somewhat, but he'll still be very happy with that return. Got away with one earlier in the over, not on that occasion. Right, so Ben Lachlan, he's missed out on the previous three games, but given a go tonight, two overs, one for 16 thus far. Entrusted with finishing the innings here for the bulk legends. And he'll know exactly what's required. This is why he's in the side to bowl a, a few overs in the power play and then to come back and close it off. Yep, uh, he's a very good bowler and uh, he knows what to do now. The, the good thing is uh, for a bulk, they have only three hours left and for Kabul's one on 64 to chase. From here look very difficult. And Ingram, a beautiful shot for a fog maximum. Saluriza. He didn't get any runs in this tournament so far, and he's struggling. I hope he can get some runs tonight. And uh, he just started, just got only first boundary of his innings today. And uh, Navi is just thinking about to keep pressure on them. That's a good ball, a good change of pace. And using his skills, the most leading wicket taker bowler in Big Bash. Yeah, he comes with some pedigree, does Ben Lachlan. And he's really good at uh, bowling in these last few overs because of his change of pace. Good slower ball, got a good Yorker as well. Really is a, a very good T20 operator. And it's slashed away on the offside. Walla does uh, some good work there be interesting to see if uh, the feet were touching the boundary he did palm it off just when he felt contact I don't know if we'll have another a look at that he did a really good job I just wonder whether that trailing leg maybe just touched the skirting umpire is not interested so he's fine it's a good save that's a massive fog maximum Spagiza from Colin Ingram that's what he's capable of doing. We've seen him in tournaments all over the world, Colin Ingram. And uh, he delivers in this fashion more times than not. He struggled in the tournament, but not so with this particular delivery. It was a change of pace, and he was able to adjust and hit it right out the middle of the bat. He knew straight away that he had got all of that. Spagiza, much needed. Oh, really well back by Ben Lachlan. Good change of pace, the slower ball bouncer. Into the over, two remaining, 193 for five. Too much to do, you'd have to think, for the Kabul's one on. We need 26 and over from here on in. That means 52 of 12 deliveries. <laughs> they need a few spuggies if they're going to get anywhere near. It's a tall order. Never say never. Good wicket. And Mirwes Ashraf, given the responsibility of bowling the penultimate over. Three overs thus far, one for 25. Well, that's up in the air. Has he got all of it? Yes, he has. That's the perfect way to start the over. That'll give them some belief. A fog maximum. Gave himself a bit of room, did Rashid Khan, and was able to get it just over. Well, that's all that counts. Yeah, what a shot from Rashid. This is his favorite area, true to the Kowa, and he crossed the boundary with another fog maximum, Spagiza. And Mirwais, he will be thinking because this is the time to at least do two or three deliveries for the last hour. I don't know who will be the bowler. Uh, hopefully not Mazari again because he already went for six sixes in the over. You never know. Maybe Mirwais go for some boundaries. That's another boundary. Beautiful shot. Back of the head of bowler. No chance for the fielder for another fog maximum Saluriza. That's 200 up for the Kabul's one on. They're making a fist of it here. They're not going to lie down. 
They're not going to give the game away to the bulk legends. And he's missed his length again, Mirway Sashraf. Trying to get it up in the block hole. And he only succeeds in bowling a length ball. Slapped away down the ground. So 10 off the first two deliveries. Fours, not enough though. They need a few spuggies. He's got to be spot on here, as Mirway Sashraf. He's uh, not expressed pace, so he's got to make sure that uh, he's getting it right up in the block hole. A fighter cricketer, Rashid Khan, not giving up. Another short attempt. Just only one runs. That's a good ball from Mirwais. Good comeback. Low full toss. He can't manage to hit it for a boundary or six runs. So very clever for Mirwais again. He's showing his skills and experience. A very old an experienced cricketer for Afghanistan from many years, a genuine all-rounder. He wouldn't like that. Very old, <laughs> maybe just experience. Experience. <laughs> <laughs> He's still young, 31. Oh, really well bowled. Big appeal. I reckon that's close. The umpire not interested, but I tell you what, he's given. Uh, Four runs, which means that he reckons it came off the bat. I thought it was off the toe. I thought it was off the pad. And there was a big appeal. The umpire unmoved, and all he did when he did move was to signal the boundary. Yeah, he went for appeal a leg before, but it's, oh, it's looked very close. What do you think, Alistair? You know, it's a tough one. Maybe he got the inside edge onto the boot, and uh, then it went away to the boundary. That's exactly what... Uh, the umpire thought Murwais is not convinced. He's going, what? Really? Boundary nonetheless, though. Oh, that's a length ball. Can't bowl there. Cannot bowl there at the death. And Colin Ingram smokes it down the ground. Spagiza, fog maximum. And this over is costing a few. 21 so far off the over and still a ball remaining. What an over for Kabul Zwanan and this man, Ingram. He find the boundary again and he's showing his power in Mirwais. 21 runs, as first five deliveries and only one ball left. Can he save one dot ball? I'll tell you what, this goes for six or four. It makes the last over interesting. Six would be uh, the desired result. Oh. And he's tried to hit it for six. But he's going to get it in the gap. Oh, I thought it would go for four. That's a good hand. Really is. And it'll just be a brace to end the penultimate over. So one over remaining. 216 for five. Well, they've made a great fist of it, of uh, the Kabul's one on. But you have to think, maybe just left themselves too much to do at the end. It's a good hand. They'd have gone for four. It would have been uh, 218 for five. So uh, how important will that be in the greater scheme of things at the end? So Ben Lachlan is going to be bowling the last over. This is where you earn your wedge as the overseas player, as the, the bowler that's supposed to do the job at the death. One for 30 thus far. Right, here we go. Last over. Try to bowl the Yorker, full toss, but gets away with it. And, uh, yeah, he knows that he's missed out there, Rashid Khan. He knows also that it makes it doubly difficult now to get over the line. Five balls, five sixes needed, almost. Or four, four, uh, four sixes, at least one four. Otherwise, there is a no chance for Kabul Zwanan. So, Ben Laughling have to think at least a one-dot ball. Welcome return to form for Colin Ingram. He's had a poor tournament thus far and come out tonight, 29 of 13. So regardless of how this game goes, that'll stand him in good stead as the tournament progresses. I really need him to be firing as well. And uh, he spent some time in the middle, hit a few out the middle of the bat. But there's still a possibility, a mathematical possibility that he can win it. Well, he's gone down the ground. Has he got all of it? No! 
Really good catch under pressure. That's top stuff. It really is. He hit it hard. It went low, flat, hard, and he's plucked it out of the air. Outstanding catch from Darvish Rasuli. Brilliant with batting today, and the catch was absolutely amazing. Such a pressure catch. That's his, his smartness and the capability of his skills. Very well judged catch in the end. And Colin Ingram, 29 after 14 deliveries, 217 for six. Shokat Zaman, the new man to the crease in the first delivery, flicks it around the corner for four. Not a great delivery from Ben Lachlan. Trying a slower ball, ended up just being a full toss. And that's an easy put away. 24-3, so the game's gone. It disappeared when Ingram was superbly caught. And as mentioned, they've made a really good fist of this run chase. It's been a superb surface here in Charger, and the ball has disappeared to all corners all day. That's full and straight and exactly where he needs to be. And all the, the batsman can do is bash it down the ground for one. Rashid Khan, 19 of six. He's uh, tried his best at the end as well to try and find the boundary and get his team over the line, but too little, too late. Well, there we go. There's a, a takeoff of MS Stoney, and all he's done is hit it straight down the throat of uh, Rasuli again. This time it's an easier catch. And another one bites the dust. Another one perishes. He's having the time of his life. Rasuli runs with bat in hand and now in the field has taken two catches. This one less important. But still, he needed to take it, needed to get underneath it, needed to make sure that uh, all was okay. Safe as houses. So Rashid Khan, his uh, little cameo comes to an end. 19 of seven deliveries. Two, two, two for seven. That's the end. All Muslim Musa can do is dig out the Yorker. And uh, they'll end up on 223 for seven on any other night. That would be plenty to win a game of T20 cricket. But tonight, chasing 245 to win, they're going to fall uh, a little bit short. And the bulk legends will win by 21 runs in the end. It's been a fascinating encounter, this first one here tonight at the Sharjah Cricket Stadium. And the table toppers, bulk legends, go further ahead. They've... Uh, pulled out a mighty clinical performance they changed their side today four changes brought in some of the guys that hadn't played in the tournament thus far we saw chris gale fire for the first time and uh, it's been an excellent effort to uh, defend 244 they had their scares on occasion hazra tula zazai who can forget his innings 62 of just 17 deliveries an outstanding innings by him but in the end it was just a bridge too far they couldn't quite get the runs required to uh, cause an upset. Rashid Khan will uh, lead his team out to uh, obviously shake hands of the opposition. It's been a thrilling contest, really has. And uh, we've been privileged to uh, have front row seats to watch the ball disappear to all corners. It really has, you have to say. The surface has been excellent. The bowling, probably less so. That's how it uh, panned out in the end. 47 of 38 for Luke Ronke. Hazratullah, outstanding. 62 of 17. And then a few cameos down the bottom of the innings. Shahidullah, 40 of 20, 29 of 14 for Colin Ingram. And Rashid, 19 of 7. But not enough to overhaul the total of 244. Well, they went uh, a country mile, all the bulk legends bowlers. Particularly 
Mazari. I'm going to feel sorry for him. One over for 37. Hasratullah getting hold of him. Gulbadain as well. Went at 15s. Well, it was Case Ahmed and Mohammed Nabi, the two spinners, that uh, were the difference in the end. It's confirmation of match 14 in the Afghanistan Premier League. 244 for six, the bulk legends. Chris Gale, 80. Rasuli, 50. Munawira, 46. Fareed Malik, 2 for 48. Had it, no ball problems. And then Kabul's one on 223 for seven. 62 for Hazratullah, 47 and 40 for Ronki and Shahidullah. Three for 37 for Ben Lachlan. And the net result of all of that was that the bulk legends consolidate their position at the top of the table and win it by 21 runs. Righty up, let's go downstairs now to Brian Murgatroyd. Thanks very much. I'm with uh, Ben Lachlan. Ben, you've played a lot of 2020 cricket over the years. I reckon that's probably one of the more bizarre and amazing games you'll have played. Yeah, that's correct. That is a bit different, that one. So, yeah, I think we were none for nine after three overs and got 250 almost. Yeah, and then they were well in front after the power play. So, yeah, nice to get a win, but, yeah, things to work on probably. Well, what was it like to be in the field there where six sixes were hit by the opposition? Yeah, that was... Um, kind of felt like you were just having a net out there. Yeah, it was quite quite quiet out there and the balls were flying. So it's uh, good to watch and nice that it didn't cost us the game. But in keeping with the plan that you had for the last game as well, when you batted, just that conservative start, keeping wickets in hand, checking what conditions were like, and then with those wickets in hand, exploding. Yeah, definitely. So we've got um, like enough to some pretty good players there to assess early on to see what we are, need to get to and sort of absorb that pressure because you can sometimes catch yourself on the wrong side there. So, yeah, the boys are batting really well at the moment. It's a pretty good batting wicket and a nice place to bat, so they're filling their boots. And really important as well in the way that you've used your bench strength this evening and still come away with the win. Yeah, the B team went all right tonight. So, yeah, no, we're all very eager to get out there and have a game. So it was nice to get out there and, you know, play our part and get the win. Thanks very much, Ben, and uh, congratulations for the victory this evening. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Uh, back to commentary. Thanks very much, Brian. Yeah, they're glad to get over the line there. It was a very batting-friendly wicket out there today, so hard work for the bowlers. This is confirmation of the standings. The bulk legends, 10 points way uh, out in front at the moment. The Carbals one on, remain on six, and the Paktia Panthers uh, on six, and then bringing up uh, the tail end, the Nangahar Leopards on four, and the Kandahar Knights on two. Just a reminder that the top four teams will qualify for the semi-finals. Don't go too far away. We'll be back back shortly with the post-match presentation.
Now that's what we would like to call a match and a half. 467 runs scored and only 40 overs. What a joy it is to be involved with the Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League powered by Fog. A historic match for sure. Six sixes in an over, very, very seldom done in the past. And of course, apart from that, we'll have to say just history all around. The bowlers may not have enjoyed it, but the batsmen certainly had a terrific time. And I hope all of you here at the Sharjah Cricket Ground enjoyed that match. You have to have. And of course, around the world as well, thank you for your company. Just before we get into the prizes, a quick um, thank you to our sponsors. Of course, big thank you to the Afghanistan Cricket Board. And along with them, uh, Snixer Sports, Fox Scent, Channel 489.1. Q Ticketing, Kapilwak Mobile, Kabab Al Afghani, Al Zahra Private Hospital, Dubai, Sports Connection, and Khalij Times. And now, of course, a quick introduction to the presentation party. To my left, a man who will be very happy uh, at this inaugural APL. We've got Mr. Shafiqullah Stanikzai, CEO of the Afghanistan Cricket Board. You've got to enjoy that match. Mr. Aditya Karolia, Assistant Marketing Manager at Gulbahar. Thank you for your title sponsorship. Mr. Kapilwak Safi, owner of the Kapilwak Mobiles Company. Mr. Fezan Malik, COO at Stardom Event Management Company. And now to the awards. Well, I suppose there were many fabulous performances, but only three awards to give away. The first one will be given by Mr. Kapilwak Safi, presenting a check of US dollars 500 to the most stylish player of the match. Well, didn't he create history today? What a joy it is to watch his innings. Only 17 balls, 62 runs, six sixes in and over. Please put your hands together for Hazratullah Zazai. Wow, well done. We're all very proud of you. Congratulations. Our next award is uh, for our most sixes of the match. Mr. Fezan Malik will present 1000 AED. Ten sixes after a slow start. At one point, he really couldn't stop hitting them. Chris Gale. Congratulations. Uh, boss man, don't go too far. We have another award for you, if you don't mind. We do have a man of the match. US dollars 500, of course, goes to the man who got 80 from only 48, Chris Gale again. The check given away by Mr. Aditya Karolia of Gulbahar and the trophy by Mr. Shafiqullah Stanikzai, CEO, Afghanistan Cricket Board. He had a chat with us earlier today. Chris Henry Gale, we'd be happy to have another chat with you. Yes, so much disappointment. You missed out on 100. <laughs> uh, that's unfortunate. Um, that's cricket. Um, unfortunate way to get out. Um, but, you know, I haven't said that. I think the fans have been waiting for this. I'm um, happy to, uh, to be among the runs. You know, to get 80 runs today, it's fantastic. And more so, you know, get another win and keep that momentum going into the playoffs. Well, you're not going to lose after making 244 <laughs> as a team. But, hey, listen, it was another shaky start. I mean, tough start today. Yeah, I mean, from a bowling point of view, it was a tough start. Um, I thought myself and Dilshan, you know, really actually adapt to the condition as quickly as possible. And, you know, Dilshan actually took the pressure off me, you know, get some momentum. And then in the, in the middle period, you know, that's where I actually pick it up. Um, but like I said, it's a good wicket. Uh, goes to show six sixes um, today as well. So it, um, it was a close game. And like I said, this is what the fans want. This is what the crowd wants. So. Yeah.